All right, welcome everybody to the Hidden Hand read through. Um, in this video, it's probably going to be long, as you could presumably see by the the video length. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Hidden Hand AMA, and this is a very interesting, just an interesting thing that exists in having come across it and having like processed all the information not really believing it not really not believing it um just how it affects your world how it affects your reality how it makes you think about spirituality how it makes you think about conspiracies um perhaps exposing some of the power structures in the world around us maybe it's just a larp and we're gonna use that word a lot a live action role play at least on this channel when we look at some some zanier piece of information um, but I, I believe this is found on like an Illuminati forum. That sounds right. Um, let me read this. We're still kind of in the preamble. Let me read this bit at the beginning here. Uh, this self-proclaimed Illuminati insider appeared on the above top secret forum in October of 2008, giving away information about the Illuminati agenda and their goals. And we say Illuminati not once does the the author refer to themselves as the Illuminati. Um, but it, it, it's kind of the same concept as the Illuminati, and so, like, don't necessarily think lizard people, but maybe crazy conspiracy stuff isn't, is not an incorrect interpretation. Um, anyways, giving away information about the Illuminati agenda and their goals. The reason for this, he says, is because time is right for us to know some of what is going on behind the scenes. And when he explains why he needs to reveal it now, it's very convincing. And it, it kind of actually is. <laughs> if, you're, like, if you're actually familiar with the Law of One, if you know about, like, oh, Epstein, the Panama Papers, and, like, one pharmaceutical company created the entire opiate crisis, like, pretty much every corporation in the world is run by 13 parent organizations, and that is very interesting, because I think they talk about 13 bloodlines specifically. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's convincing. Um, I, I also want to cover one more thing before we get into it, and that is its connection to the Law of One, where people who are knowledgeable and educated in the Law of One, and if you believe in the Law of One or the raw material or think there's some truth to it, it's already kind of crazy and out there, but a lot of people look at the validity of this um, AMA based on how well the authors familiarized with the raw material. Um... So keep keep that in mind for the LARP. A lot of people say it's a LARP and that the author just knew the raw material very well, which is still really interesting um, to, to read and, and see what they have to say with applied knowledge of, of the Law of One. But, you know, I don't want to tell you to, whether to believe it or, or, or not to believe it. I just want to put it there and then, you know, you can form your own thoughts and opinions on it. In a, in a later video, I will be doing... Uh, a discussion as well, kind of picking through this and, and saying things. But for, for this video, I just kind of wanted to get this preamble out, and now we'll begin. Hidden Hand, I am a generational member of a ruling bloodline family. Every so often, as per the directives of the law of our creator, a brief window of opportunity opens, whereby a select handful of our family are required to make communication with our subjects and offer you the chance to ask us any questions you would like answered. I am double bound in this duty. It is required of me by the law of our creator to offer this opportunity to you at this time, though I am also bound by the law of planetary free will and by family oaths, and that there is only so much I am able to say. Rules define life and games. If you wish to participate, here they are. Number one. I will afford you courtesy and respect in the manner I address you, and I expect the same from you in reciprocation. I will decide whether or not I am either willing or permitted to answer your question. If your question is not answered, it is either because I cannot disclose it, or because I considered your question was lacking in one or more of the following. Respect, courtesy, intelligence, decency, or that it was otherwise unworthy of being dignified with a response. Number three, that you agree to treat this potential dialogue with an aspect of provisional faith. In practice, this means that rather than impeding the flow of information of crass comments of disbelief or petty name-calling, my participation here requires of you that you discourse with me under suspended judgment. 
In other words, wait until the process is complete before deciding for yourself as to the content of truth and knowledge imparted herein. Number four, that you formulate your questions intelligently. My time is limited. I do not want to waste it by having to trawl through pointless, futile, insensible, or disrespectful questions. Therefore, I will answer the questions I feel are most deserving of a response. During the time that I have available, use the time we have wisely. If any of the above conditions are breached, I reserve the right to terminate our discourse forthwith, if I so choose. That being said, I will attempt to answer your questions as honestly and openly as is permissible for me. And he does. <laughs> and he does. I will check back and respond as time allows. How many generations back does your bloodline extend? Or, perhaps more accurately, who does your family consider its earliest ancestor in a position of power? Our lineage can be traced back beyond antiquity. From the earliest times ever recorded to history and beyond, our family has been directing the play from behind the scenes in one way or another. Before the rise and fall of Atlantis, yes, that was indeed perfectly real. We are born to lead. It is a part of the design for the current paradigm. To what extent has selective breeding been used to preserve the purity of the line, and what becomes of children of unapproved unions? They would still naturally be raised a privilege, but not, perhaps, given the geese of the castle, as it were. The breeding is generally case-specific, dependent upon the role that the family members in question are due to grow into. I will touch more on this and answer the next poster's question that you rephrased. There are no unapproved unions. Our family will always intermarry between lines, or what we would term houses. Marriages are arranged. In all my years alive, I have never seen or heard of a family member breaking this code, as far as marriage goes. You do as you are told. One cannot join the family. One is born or incarnated into it. On the rare instances of a child being born that could be seen as bringing difficulties, you are correct in your premise. That would be raised as part of the family, though would not grow up in the house or community of either of its parents. If one were to imagine a scale, perhaps as a triangle with political, religious, and corporate power at the three points, how would you categorize the power your family yields? Balanced, leaning more towards one or two than a third, heavily favoring one of the three above the others? And has that position shifted over time? You need to first understand the structure of the family. In the grand scheme of things, the line is not as important as the house. The house is not as important as the family. The family is all. No matter the house or line, we are one truly international family. Imagine, if you will, a body. A house would represent a vital organ or body part within the body itself. Each part has an important role to play in the functioning of the whole and to each of us, the whole has our undivided loyalty. As I say, many lines, far more than you are aware of, one family. Our realms of influence do not fit as comfortably into the three boxes of your triangles as you may imagine. There are six disciplines of training within the family, and each member of the family is schooled extensively in all of them from early childhood. We all have an area of specialty, though we have experience in all spheres. The six spheres or schools of learning are military, government, spiritual, scholarship, leadership, and sciences. In practice, out there on the stage of public life, we hold key positions in all of these main areas of importance. With the addition of a complicit media machine and ownership of your financial establishment, all bases are covered. I will have to reply in parts due to the restriction of characters per post. And here we have Napoleon making the hidden hand sign, um, showing that he's initiated in the bloodline. Uh, I don't think this is part of the, the AMA. I think the author put that there. Which ruling bloodline family? Rockefellers? That may be a bit too direct for our inquisity. I'll, I'd offer the following substitute. How many parallel bloodlines do you estimate are in similar positions to your own, and to what extent does your family see them as either competition or collaborators? Yes, as I say, 
Knowing the line is of no practical use to you. It is a belonging to the family that is important. There are 13 base or core original bloodlines, yet there are many, many other lines that spring from these, as do rivers from the oceans. If you imagine the 13 original lines as primary color that can be mixed to create a vast array of other colors, then you will have some comprehension. Again, no competition, just family. No competition in the sense of house against house, though it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So there is interpersonal competition in that sense of the word. Everyone wants to move up. Our whole familial society is geared that way, towards upward progression. What does the term generational member mean? Which generation specifically? It means that one is born into the family. The order and its agendas is handed down from generation to generation. Only in extremely rare occasions have outsiders been invested into the family, and then even these were of other esoterically integrable lines. Can you cite two or more previous instances where this directive has been upheld? Once in 1999 to what you would call an alternative media source, once in 2003 on another internet conspiracy-based forum. Though the information relayed was not entirely pure, not from the intention of misleading, but rather through imperfect or incomplete knowledge of the messengers. If it is not in the mainstream controlled media, it will not be believed by the masses. This is information tailored for those who already know that we are very real and exerting a strong, if mostly subtle, influence over your lives. If you wish to enslave a man, allow him to believe that he is already free. By what basis is the timing of such revelations established? By the decree of the Supreme World Council, according to the will of the Creator. Are we really considered chattel and traded as such by the government? By the governments, generally, yes. People are seen as collateral. Pawns that are maneuvered around the chessboard according to the game plan. By the family, contrary to popular beliefs, many of us do not mean you any harm directly. There is just the matter of divine destiny to uphold and unfold, and we must play our parts in the game as given to us by the creator. In many ways, it is actually in our own interest that you are prepared for the coming harvest, just not maybe prepared in quite the way that you would like. Still, even then, you are choosing the negative polarity with your own free will decisions with a little help and direction from us. Souls are harvestable in either extreme of the polarities, one could say. If so, how do we become free men? You will never be free for as long as you are incarnating on this planet. The very nature of your being here is indication of that. There is a reason why you are here, and here is very likely not really where you think here is. How do you become free? By working out where you are and coming to an understanding of why you are here. You are fast running out of time to do so before the coming harvest. Those that don't make it will have to repeat the cycle. Is the Messiah alive today? There is no Messiah. Stop looking outside of yourself for salvation. Is there what you might call a Christ consciousness alive? Then yes, in a manner of speaking, though not in your third dimensional awareness. Is it the end times as described in the book of Revelations? Yes, not just described in the book of Revelations, but also in the prophecies of virtually every religion, spiritual philosophy, and mystery tradition throughout history. This time is now at hand. To use your own example, however, Revelations 14, 14 through 16, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him, who sat in the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. The earth is indeed ripe for harvest. The question is, who will be ready, and will the harvest be positive or negative? 
How do you justify that the current British royal family line is the true bloodline, but Ishmael is not the true receiver of Abraham's gift? If you're a true bloodline, you'll know what I mean. Who says it is the true line? There were ruling bloodlines long before your Yahweh and his Christianity arrived on this planet. Yahweh is a creator, not the one infinite creator. There are other and higher gods than him. Ultimately, all are a part of the one, and either consciously or unconsciously, exercising their free will to create. Begin to study outside of the box for a true understanding of the creation. The British royalty is not the most powerful line. The names that you know do not hold the real ancient power. There are others above these lineages in the hierarchy. You will not know the names of these lines. What proof do you have that ruling elite families exist and that you're a member of one? It's something that I think you thought was not falsifiable, which is why you chose that identity for the story you're weaving. However, I think there may indeed be a way you can prove it. I have no need to prove anything to you. I am merely doing my duty as directed to me. Believe or do not believe, we are divinely indifferent. I am obliged to complete this task here. The end result is of no consequence to me. I will have discharged my duty in handing down certain information that must be released at this time. There is no stipulation as to where I do so, only that I do. I chose above top secret, as the general level of intelligence, comprehension, and reasoning is reckoned to be higher than in many such forums. Understand, due to the law of free will, I cannot just give you information, at least not without consequences of my own person, which I would rather avoid. It is an infringement upon your free will, your right to not know. You have to ask me for the information you want, only then can I provide it. So whilst there are important things I have to share, if I am not asked the questions, I cannot get that information to you. I am hopeful that synchronicity will bring the most important questions of real depth out from among you. My duty is to offer. Yours is to ask. My duty is fulfilled whether or not yours is. Surely if ruling elite families exist and you are a member of one, then you must be controlling global events through world governments. Tell us one major government action from any country that is going to occur the next five days. I won't be surprised when you refuse to do so. On September 10th, 2008, I am not at liberty to discuss such intimate, immediate detail, and in many cases I am not far enough up the hierarchy to know anyway. Typically, I would receive a call a day before the enactment of a major event, just to say something along the lines of, this part of such and such a plan will take place tomorrow, in such and such a way, do not be alarmed. Also, one has to take into account the specific areas of specialty I mentioned previously. My area is in spirituality, so my focus is not so much on geopolitical events. I am aware of the overall design, though the finer points are often not my area of expertise. I am prepared to give you some things coming on the timeline that you'll be able to look back upon and verify my predictions retrospectively. This is where he screws up. <laughs> this is where like, the most doubt comes from material. The stock markets will soon complete their controlled demolition. After initial appearance at the bailouts and rescue packages have steadied the ship, there will be new record lows by the end of the month. Our financial institutions will later call in all loans, there will be many bankruptcies and foreclosures. The only way John McCain will become the next U.S. president will be if something happens to Barack Obama before the election, if there even is an election. If a certain faction get their way, there will not be. Remember, behind the scenes there's only one party. Our party. Democracy is an illusion which is created to uphold your slavery. Whichever side wins, the family wins. There are many possibilities and alternative scripts. All of them lead toward the ultimate implementation of the overall blueprint of our creator. Unless any unforeseen disruptions delay its announcement, there will be a new currency by the end of 2008, early 2009, along with a new union of nations. January has been spoken of in some circles as the latest, though there are plans underway which could even bring this to fruition much earlier than initially hoped for. It depends upon the results of other upcoming events as to how this will play out. 
I am not high enough up the hierarchy to know the intimate details of the dates and times that far in advance. There is a tree system in which knowledge is passed down as and when it becomes need to know. I would be considered to be a regional leader. Above me are national and international. San Francisco and Damascus will be uninhabitable by the end of 2010, possibly even sooner. Again, it depends upon certain forces at play, and which timelines are activated. Humanity, though utterly unconscious of the fact, has a significant part to play in this. You, as a collective consciousness of the planet, are choosing the negative polarization by default, by the quality of your thoughts and actions. Thought is creative energy, focused. You get exactly what you put out. Why do you think the media is so important to us? You have, as a society, in your hypnotized, comatose state, given your free will consent to the state your planet is in today. You saturate your minds with the unhealthy dishes served up for you on your televisions that you are addicted to. Violence, pornography, greed, hatred, selfishness, incessant bad news, fear, and terror. When was the last time you stopped to think of something beautiful and pure? The planet is the way it is because of your collective thoughts about it. You are complicit in your inaction every time you look the other way when you see an injustice. Your thought at the subconscious level of creation to the creator is your allowance of these things to occur. In so doing, you are serving our purpose. It is very important to us that the polarization of this planet is negative at the time of the great harvest. That means service to self-oriented as opposed to positive service to others. We require a negative harvest, and you are doing a fine job of helping us to attain our goal. We are very grateful. There will be dramatic changes to your climate and weather conditions over the next few years as the time of the great harvest approaches. You will see wind speeds surpassing 300 miles per hour at times. There will be raging tsunamis and widespread devastation, and solar emission in late 2009, early 2010, that will cause major melting of the ice caps and subsequent drastic rise in sea levels, leaving many international metropolitan areas underwater. That is all I have time for at present. I have a sacrifice I must attend now. No, not really. Let's see if we can increase the depth of inquiry and question matter in the next session. Seek beyond the superficial. Get to the core of the matter. Session 2. How do you know that your bloodline deserves to lead and the rest deserve to follow? Wealth and power is self-propagating, therefore I say to you that your bloodline only comprises the extreme elite of the world because your ancestors came to power by chance in the beginning, not because your kind are special. In fact, there's nothing special, clever, or honorable in enslaving others. It is not about deserving or not. Does one deserve to be born English, or American, Italian, French, or German, and so on? We came not to power by chance, but rather, which I know may be hard to swallow, by intelligent design. This path of ours was not chosen by us, but rather it was appointed and accepted. Who is your creator, and is your creator the same as our creator? This is an excellent question which I can use to draw our communication closer to the core. Yes and no. You would first need to understand the creation. In the beginning, there is the infinite one. This is the source of all, intelligent infinity. It is the undifferentiated absolute. Within it is unlimited potential, waiting to become. Think of it as the uncarved block of your Taoist traditions. Infinite intelligence, becoming aware of itself, seeks to experience itself, and the one infinite creator is born or manifest. This appears to your third density comprehension as space. In effect, the creator is a point of focused infinite consciousness or awareness into infinite intelligent energy. The one infinite creator also becomes self-aware, seeks to experience itself as creator, and in so doing, begins the next step down in the creational spiral. The one infinite creator, in focusing its infinite intelligence, becomes intelligent energy, which you could call the great central sun, and divides itself into smaller portions of itself, 
that can then in turn experience themselves as creators or central suns. In other words, each central sun or creator is a step down in conscious awareness or distortion from the original thought of creation. So in the beginning was not the word, but thought. The word is thought expressed and made manifest as creator. There is unity. Unity is all there is. Infinite intelligence and infinite energy, the two are one, and within them is the potential for all creation. This state of consciousness could be termed as being. Infinite intelligence does not recognize its potential. It is the undifferentiated absolute. But infinite energy recognizes the potential of becoming all things in order to bring any desired experience into being. Intelligent infinity can be likened to the central heartbeat of life, and infinite energy as the spiritual lifeblood or potential which pumps out for the creator to form the creation. This image may assist your comprehension. Creation is based upon the three primary distortions of the infinite one. Number one, free will. In the first law or distortion of creation, the creator receives the free will to know and experience itself as an individuated, though paradoxically unified aspect of the one. Number two, love. In the second law of creation, the initial distortion of free will becomes a focus point of awareness known as logos or love, or the word in biblical terms. Love or logos or the word in biblical terms using its infinite intelligent energy, then takes on the role of co-creating a vast array of physical illusions, thought forms, or densities, which some call dimensions, in which according to its intelligent design will best offer the range of potential experiences in which it can know itself. In effect, the one infinite creator in dividing itself into logos could be termed in your third density understanding as a universal creator. In other words, Logos creates on a universal level of being. Logos creates physical universes in which it and the creator may experience their self. Let there be light. Number three, light. To manifest this infinite spiritual or life force energy into a physical thought form of densities, Logos creates the third distortion of light. From the three original primary distortions of the one into making the creation, arise myriad hierarchies of other sub-distortions, containing their own specific paradoxes. The goal of the game is to enter into these and further divisions of creation, and then seek to harmonize the polarities, in order to once again know oneself as the creator of them. The nature of all such physically manifest energy is light. Wherever thus exists any form of physical matter, there is light or divine intelligent energy at its core or center. Something which is infinite cannot be other than or many. An infinite creator knows only unity. Thus, drawing upon its infinite intelligence, the infinite creator designed a blueprint based on the finite principles of free will of awareness and sublevel creations, which in turn could become aware of themselves and seek to experience themselves as creators. And so the Russian doll style experiment was stepped down and down and down, levels of creation within levels of creation. The one infinite creator or great central sun steps down its infinite energy to become Logos. Logos in turn designs vast universes of space as yet unmaterialized, stepping down and splitting itself again into logoi, plural. In other words, into an array of central signs which will become a logos, or co-creator, of its own universe, with each unique individualized portion of the one infinite creator containing within it its very essence, intelligent infinity. Using the law of free will, each universal logos, central sun, designs and creates its own version or perspective of physical reality in which to experience itself as creator. Stepping down again, it focuses its intelligent energy and creates the unmanifest form of galaxies within itself and splits itself into yet further co-creator portions, sub-logos or suns, 
which in turn will then design and manifest their own ideas of physical reality in the form of points of conscious awareness that we call suns, stars, and planets. A planetary entity, or soul, begins the first density of experience into which another individualized portion of the One can incarnate. Just as with all logos and sublogos of creation, each soul is yet another smaller unique portion of the Infinite One. At first, the intelligent energy of the planet is in a state that you would call chaos, meaning that its energy is undefined. Then, the process begins again. The planetary energy begins to become aware of itself. The first density of awareness is consciousness, and the planetary logos, sub-sub-logos in effect, begins to create other downward steps within itself, and the internal makeup of the planets begins to form, as the raw elements of air and fire combine to work on the waters and earth, thus arising conscious awareness of their being, and the process of evolution begins, forming the second density. Second density beings begin to become aware of themselves as being separate and thus begin to evolve towards the third density of self-conscious awareness, the lowest density into which a human soul can incarnate. Humans in turn, or the souls incarnated within them, seek to return to the light and love from which they came, as they begin the journey of progression from third density up to the eighth density, and the return to the infinite oneness. Explanation of the densities beyond normal human consciousness is another question, though. So if you wish to know more about them, someone will need to ask an intelligent question which I can respond to so as not to impinge upon your free will not to know. So having set forth the above, I can return to further elucidate on your original question. Who is your creator, and is your creator the same as our creator? As I said, yes and no. Ultimately, every living thing, and all things are living, is created by the One Infinite Creator's initial universal creation. So yes, taken from that perspective, the One Infinite Creator focuses its infinite intelligence into an awareness point of infinite energy, and brings the whole of creation into being. Though we are not directly created by the One Infinite Creator, but rather by our own Logos, Sublogos, and Sub-Sublogos, and so on. So from that perspective, whilst we are all essentially made up of the same stuff of creation, initiated by the One Infinite Creator, our actual personal creators are different portions or sub-logos of the One. In other words, yes, our creator, whilst originating from the same source, is not the same entity as your creator. Which brings me on to a question from another poster. I will continue with your other questions afterwards, but this enables me to indirectly answer the first aspect of your question without having to ask you to rephrase it, due to having to carefully dance around the free will issues. You say that you come from 13 original bloodlines, yet the DNA mapping project clearly proved that all humanity descended from only three. Does this mean you aren't human? An excellent question, thank you. Yes, that is correct in a manner of speaking. If you were to meet me walking down the street, I would appear just as human as you do. We've been incarnating here with you for generations, yet our bloodlines do not originate from this planet. Your answer to the six disciplines of learning are quite similar to a book about Atlantis that was supposed to have been channeled. Was this also a time for your bloodlines to post answers? Yes, that is correct. Again, in a manner of speaking. Other, shall we say, off-world entities also visited the planet at that time and passed down their own understandings of creation as well as their technology, from what we could best describe as being a future aspect of yourselves. It was humanity's errors in handling this information that ultimately led to the destruction of Atlantis. Having now answered a question on whether or not our lineage is of human origin, I can return to tie in that answer with an explanation as to who is our creator. I'm dancing close to the line in answering this, but the record needs to be set straight, and I should just be able to get away with it without incurring my own upline displeasure. Let us get to the crux of the matter. Your creator, the one you have called Yahweh, is not God inasmuch as your Bible refers to him as being the one true God. 
he is a creator or sub sub logos rather than the one infinite creator. He is not even a galactic level logos, but rather is the planetary logos for this one planet. Our creator is the one you refer to as Lucifer, the light bearer and bright and morning star. Our creator is not the devil as he has been spuriously portrayed in your Bible. Lucifer is what you would call a group soul or social memory complex, which has evolved to the level of the sixth density, which in effect means that he, or more accurately we, has evolved to a level sufficient that he, we, has attained a status equal or arguably greater than that of Yahweh. We have evolved higher than him. In appearance, were you to gaze upon Lucifer's fullest expression of our being, the appearance would be that of a sun or a bright star. Or when stepping down into a third density vibration, we would appear as what you may term an angel or light being. Allow me to elucidate. When an entity group soul complex evolves to the level of the sixth density, it is by comparison to the amount of time it takes to get that far, a mere hop, skip, and a jump from 8th density ultimate reunion with the one infinite creator, and then from there, back to dissolution into the source of all intelligent infinity. We, our bloodline families, as a group soul or social memory complex, Lucifer, were on the verge of 7th density ascension, though at this level before harvest comes, we have the choice to progress higher, or to return to help others of lower densities with their own evolution, by passing down our knowledge and wisdom, light, to those that call upon us for assistance with their own free will. Now, at this time, having made our decision to stay and help our galactic brothers and sisters in the One, we were assigned a challenging task by the Council of Elders, who act as the guardians of this galaxy from their 8th density headquarters on the planet Saturn. Yahweh, due to the fact that he had not, as was his right as planetary logos, handed down his own free will to know thyself to those incarnating upon his planet, was having very little evolutionary progress therein. So we, Lucifer, were sent to help. Once the order was given from the Council of Elders, we fell, or descended back to a place where we could, with hard work and focus, once again materialize a third density manifestation of ourself. Yahweh had agreed to our coming. In fact, it was he who had initially asked the council for a catalyst of change to enter into his creation and share the knowledge and wisdom we had attained through our ascensions. In the absence of free will upon the planet, there can be no polarity and therefore nothing to choose between. Just as is portrayed in the book of Genesis, the planet was very Edenic in nature. Sure, it was a lovely paradise, Yet the beings incarnating there had no agitator towards evolving beyond the third density, and therefore, little hope of ever making the journey home to the One. Yahweh has been happy to keep his own little pet Eden project in effect, but with little chance of these souls here making it home. It had become, in effect, an albeit very beautiful prison. Yahweh was, in modern parlance, running a benign dictatorship. Without polarity, derived from free will, there is only the unity of love and light, and no choice to experience other than that. So, we were to be the catalyst for change, in order to provide that choice, thus bringing polarity. Yahweh agreed that we would introduce the concept of free will to Earth's inhabitants by offering them an initial choice as to whether they wanted it or not. Hence the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or more accurately, the knowledge of polarity of positive or negative. Yahweh takes his inhabitants to a new garden and tells them you can do anything you like, except this one thing, thus creating the desire to do the one thing they are told they cannot. Hence a choice. We provide the catalyst by telling them the benefits of attaining knowledge, they eat from the tree, and the rest is history. Yahweh thought that his children would still choose to obey him, and when he discovered they did not, he became angry. As he himself describes in his scriptures, he is a jealous God, and he did not like it that his children had chose to disobey him and follow our advice. 
We're already committed to being here for a predefined set of cycles to help provide the catalyst for human evolution, namely by offering you the negative option or that which you choose to call evil. Now that free will has been granted, Yahweh could not retract it, and we have to stay here as contracted to continue to provide the planet with the polarity choice. Since then, Yahweh has confined us, as a group soul, here within the Earth's astral planes, which is very constricting and uncomfortable for a being of our wisdom and experience. The Council of Elders gave us the choice to be released against Yahweh's will, but at the cancellation of our contract to serve the planet Earth, or to remain and fulfill our assignment and endure Yahweh's self-proclaimed wrath. We stayed, but as karmic result of our group soul's confinement by Yahweh, our own individuated souls were given the mandate by the Council to rule over Yahweh's people during our physical incarnations here on your planet. Let's be clear about one thing though. All of this physical life incarnation is a very intricate and skillfully designed game, whereby the one infinite creator plays the game of forgetting who it is so that it can learn to remember, and in doing so, experience and know itself as creator. All the way down to us tiny individuated sparks of the all that is. Off stage and between lives, zero point time slash antimatter universe, as incarnated human beings, we, all of us, you as souls, are great friends, brothers and sisters in the one. Between lives, we all have a great laugh about the parts we have performed in the play, and look forward to and have great fun preparing the next chapters to act out. I hope that during the above answer, I have also adequately covered your question on what is our interpretation of good versus evil? If not, please say, and I will go into more detail. Can you elaborate on the coming harvest and what exactly you mean by harvest? I can. I will combine my answer to you with my reply to the following question. Is 2012 harvest time? When you speak of the harvest, it has echoes of chaos Gnosticism in the sense that we are divine souls trapped in the physical world, continuously reincarnated in the flesh until the time that we reach such a level of spiritual gnosis that we are able to avoid being reincarnated in our next cycle. Is this the foundation of your belief? Another excellent and very insightful question. Thank you. The higher the quality of the question, the more depth I can give to my answer. It all has to do with the laws of confusion and free will. Yes, the noonday winter solstice sun of December 21st, 2012 is a time when the Lord of the Harvest shall return. You might know him as Nibiru. Read up on the Mayan prophecies and calendrical events for more details upon how the actual galactic and universal cycles work. The travelers who gave them this information were the same ones who visited the civilization of Atlantis. The Mayans used that information by creating with the positive vibration of the polarity. The Atlanteans opted for the negative. Yes, to answer your question, there is much truth in some of the ancient Gnostic texts, though there are also distortions. The information is not pure. It came through many filters. You are indeed what you call divine souls. You are sparks or seeds of the one infinite creator. You are life itself, light, remembering and learning who you really are. We came here to help you do this. And yes, currently you are trapped, or more accurately, quarantined within the matter of this planet you call Earth. You can thank your creator Yahweh for that. You are the offspring, or his individuations of his group soul or social memory complex. Macrocosmically speaking, you are Yahweh. The karmic effect of his imprisoning us in his astral planes also has an impact upon you. I cannot be more specific on this without impinging on the law of confusion. You must work it out for yourselves. As for the question of can I elaborate on the coming harvest, yes, I shall do so now. Your planet abides by the laws of the creation of your galactic logos. The galaxy runs on cycles of time known as the procession of the equinoxes. As I said, seek the Mayan calendar for a deeper insight as to how the galaxy runs. It is highly accurate, but for the purpose of this discourse, I will give a brief overview. 
The Maya uses an astrological cycle called the Procession of the Equinoxes. This is a 26,000 year cycle in which Earth transits through each of the 12 signs of the zodiac for about 2,152 years each. Each of these astrological ages represents one month of the grand cosmic year. This Mayan cycle also corresponds to a 26,000 year relationship of the Sun, Solar Logos, orbiting Alcyone, the central star of our Seven Sisters Pleiades constellation. The end of this cycle heralds literally a new world age and a new creation, a new heaven and a new earth, and it is a time of the great harvest. Smaller cycles yield a harvest and then life continues on the planet as normal. Great cycles yield a great harvest and the end of current life on the third density. See it as a kind of cosmic jet wash in deep clean while the planet takes a rest and regenerates herself. When this life cycle ends, all things will pass away and all things shall be made new. Collectively, humanity right now is growing and developing into the beings we have long been encoded to be. Yet, as with any labor, it is not the mother or the baby who is in charge, it is the primal process of birth itself, unfolding its own destiny. So December 21st, 2012 AD is not the day where all of a sudden the lights go out and everything will suddenly change. Rather, we are now in the process of this transition from one world age to the next. The changes are underway and will continue steadily accelerating as we head towards the culminating date. The 26,000 year cycle is composed of five lesser cycles, each of which are 5,125 years in duration. Each of these five cycles is considered its own world age or creation cycle. Our present great cycle, 3113 BC to 2012 AD, is called the Age of the Fifth Sun. This fifth age is the synthesis of the previous four. The initial date that Earth entered the fifth world was August 13th, 3113 BC, written in Mayan long count notation as 13.0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. To help you understand this notation, 13 equals back tons, 0 equals katons, the second 0 tons, the third unals, and the fourth kin. These are the Mayan words for the periods of time. Day equals keen, month of 20 days keen, weenal, year of 360 days keen, tune, 20 tunes years, katun, 20 katuns, baktun, a Bach tune is 5,125 years, 13.0.0.0.0. Every day from that point is reckoned by the number of days passed since the event of this cosmic beginning point. Within the 5,125 year cycle lies 13 smaller cycles, known as the 13 Bach tune count, or the long count. Each Bach tune cycle lasts for 394 years, or 144,000 days. Each Bactune was its own historical age within the Great Creation Cycle, with a specific destiny for the evolution of those who incarnated in each Bactune. Planet Earth and our inhabitants are currently traveling through the 13th Bactune Cycle, the final period of 1618 to 2012 AD. This cycle is known both as the Triumph of Materialism and the Transformation of Matter. On 13.0.0.0.0, the December solstice stun will be found in the band of the Milky Way, directly in the position of the dark rift in the galaxy, forming an alignment between the galactic plane and the solstice meridian. We are about to enter into a literal alignment of the cosmic, galactic, solar, and lunar planes. This is an event that has slowly converged over a period of thousands of years and is caused by the procession of the equinoxes, kind of like a turning of the universal gears. It brings about the great harvest and the return of the Lord of the Harvest. And the planet will complete its ascension to the fourth density, the vibrational density of love. During this ascension, there will be a three-way split for those souls inhabiting Earth. Those of the predominantly negative polarity will accompany us as we graduate through the negative or service to self harvest. We, Lucifer, will create a new fourth density earth based on the negative self-service polarity. 
we must work off our own part of the negative karmic effects occurred from all the negativity created on this planet. Once we have done so, we will be released to once again assume our place as six density guardians and teachers of wisdom throughout the galaxy. Those of the predominantly positive polarity, love and light, will ascend to a beautiful new fourth density earth, where you'll begin to work upon your learning and demonstrating of love and compassion. It will be a very beautiful and golden age. The fourth density begins to open you up to your true powers as a unique, individualized aspect of the one infinite creator. You will perform works and wonders of the like that the one you called Jesus promised you would do, and even greater things than these. It will be a very magical time for you. For the majority of humans on the earth who could be considered, shall we say, lukewarm, they will experience a period of what will feel ecstatic, zero-point time, where you feel totally at one with the Creator, giving you an encouraging reminder and glimpse of who you really are, before the veil of forgetfulness once again descends upon you, and you will be transported to another third-density planet, a kind of Earth replica, to continue working upon yourselves and learning that life here is all about making choices. You will remain quarantined, incarnated in third density matter until the time of the next harvest, in which time you will need to have proved yourselves that you have learned how to be more positive beings, focused more upon being of service to others rather than seeking only to serve yourself. When you can do this and the next harvest comes, you will have earned the right to join us and enjoy your inheritance as a member of the galactic community and you will sit with us as brothers and sisters of the One, around the table of our galactic governing body, the Confederation of Planets. Well, I have imparted much during this session, with thanks to the quality of your inquiries, and I must now take my leave for today. If you have further questions on the harvest you wish me to speak in more detail on, if you ask, I can answer. Or any other questions you have too on other matters, I will get to them all as time allows. As with the others, respectfully ask questions here since I took these away of me to reply earlier. If time permits, I will check in with you tomorrow. A lot of what you write seems reminiscent of the raw material, especially the concept of harvest, service to self, and other choices, and intelligent infinity. Have you read that? It is indeed extremely similar. We both originate from the source of the infinite creator, and we both remember where we come from. I would expect our messages to contain the same core truths. The messages of the Six Density Soul Group Ra is the most accurate information in your mainstream circulation at this point in time. It is approximately 85-90% to 90 accurate from what I have seen. The material was brought to my attention when it first came out, something like about 25 years ago or so, if memory serves. I read a lot of it, but not all. I do not have very much free time for that kind of thing with my many duties, though others of the family gave it a close scrutiny to judge its accuracy and were very pleased with the end product. Ra, in fact, is the group I earlier termed off-world entities of which visited the Mayan and Atlantean civilizations. We are acquainted and friends. Both our group souls are at a very similar level of development, evolution. Both 6th density, nearly 7th. But like us, Ra also chose the path of service to our fellow galactic brothers and sisters, you and others, instead of further progression home. We would recommend that material for any who truly seek understanding, though, as I said, it is not 100% accurate. So take what resonates. <laughs> What function, if any, do alien abductions have? Why are abductees chosen? That depends. Upon who is doing the abducting, most of what you hear termed as abductions are conducted by your own governments, especially the ones where the so-called greys are involved. Other than that, sometimes the Confederation will meet with certain incarnates here who have a part to play in awakening others to the coming harvest. These will always be positive experiences, and those who have them will feel uplifted and inspired by their contact. Then there is the Orion Empire Group. Their purposes in visiting you are more along the negative lines. 
they mainly target the ones you have called light workers. They try to put them off their assignments and try to spread fear. They will not actually harm you physically. Mainly their modus operandi is to restrict you and deflect you from your path. They often engage in psychic attacks that the light worker is unaware of but it does often drain away much of their energy and make them lack motivation. Why do you want a negative harvest? It is complicated to put into words, and also I must be careful with what I say on this. I've already had a slap on the wrist, you could say. If we do not have a negative harvest, we are bound with you for another cycle. Once this great harvest is completed, our contract with the Council and our Creator is also completed. In other words, we have done our duty and would be free to return to our fullest expression, that of six, nearly seventh, density galactic guardians, and ones who joyfully offer ourselves in service to the one infinite creator and to our brothers and sisters across the galaxy. However, there is a problem. Well, you would call it a problem, we call it a challenge. I will address this later in more detail in response to another question, but in short, we need a very high percentage of negative polarity if we are to achieve a negative harvest. In other words, we have to be self-service centered to an extreme degree in order to become negatively harvested. This is why we work so hard to be as negatively polarized as we possibly can be. If we do not make a high enough percentage, we will miss out and we'll end up with the majority lukewarm percentage that have to go through another cycle in third density. By attaining a negative harvest, we can still graduate to fourth density, only it will be a negative polarity planet, not a great place to be. But, as I've stated previously, we, as a group soul, have incurred the natural karmic restitution process that we must work off for all the negativity we have caused upon this planet. We will do this for a cycle in our fourth density world, and then we will be free to once again be the glorious being of light that we truly are. We need a negative harvest so that we can create our fourth density earth and clear our karmic record. Understand that we have to be negative. That's what we were sent here to be. It is our contract and has always been to help you by providing the catalyst I spoke of earlier. Being negative is very hard for us. Not on a physical level, the characters we play enjoy our roles as we're programmed that way, but on a spiritual level it is hard. We surpassed the lowly negative vibration aeons ago. We are light and we are love. It is a very hard thing for us to do spiritually, to create all this negativity, but we do it because we love you and it is for your highest good, ultimately. You could say that it is our sacrifice that we have made in order to be of service to the one infinite creator and to you, our brothers and sisters in the one. Remember, we are all just acting out a grand old game here, where we agree to forget who we really are, that in the remembering, that we may find each other again, and know that we are one, that all of life is one. I must correct you here. The procession of the equinoxes cannot cause this. It cannot cause anything other than the way in which we here on Earth view the cosmos around us, it concerns the wobble of the Earth's axis and as far as I know does not relate to any other planetary bodies. From a third density perspective, you are correct. It appears that way. We do not look from a third density perspective. There is a bigger picture at work that you cannot see. Regarding our enslavement, you seem to be saying, essentially, that as a fraction of our Logos Yahweh, we are equally responsible for his decision to keep us trapped here on our third density planet Earth. That's an interesting thought. In that sense, our total freedom must arrive through a collaborative spiritual effort. From a certain perspective, what you say is correct. From a third density view, you see yourselves as being separate from everything. From a higher perspective, you see that is not at all the case. You and your creator are one. As to your statement on your total freedom, you are not responsible for those around you. You and they are all one too, when seen from a higher density. But in this density, you are here to work upon yourself. You are here to remember who you are and why you are here. You are here to remember the infinite creator, to know your creator within you and to offer your service to him and others of your own free will choice to serve. 
The one comes before the other. When you remember who you are and you know it, deep within the core of your being, you will know and recognize your invisible connection to all that is, and in so doing, joy and thanksgiving and service will be the natural outpouring result from your grateful heart. When you work upon yourself and learn to know the Creator within you, being of service to others will be natural for you, and your glorious harvest shall await. One thing I don't get, and perhaps you can explain this to me, Hidden Hand, is why those who belong to Lucifer and Lucifer himself do not fight for the freedom of all souls? If Lucifer represents liberty, freedom of will, and knowledge, why do those who serve him not do as the biblical Lucifer did and rebel against the tyranny of the elders? This is a very good question, thank you. I will split it into two parts and answer the second part after this. Firstly, the Council of Elders are the absolute opposite of tyrannical. They are the wise and loving guardians of our galaxy. There is so much that one cannot understand from only a third density perspective. When you reach higher densities, you see that ultimately, everything balances and there is only unity. All else than unity is illusion or thought form. The Council gave us a set of choices. We chose to stay here to help you despite the cost to ourselves. That is the nature of loving service to others. The ultimate paradox in all this is that in this storyline we are all co-creating together. In order for us to be of the most service to you, we must be utterly self-serving. I do so love our creator's sense of irony. As to the first part of your question, the biblical depiction of war in heaven is not entirely inaccurate. I shall explain. Our initial contract was to introduce the catalyst for free will on this planet. When Yahweh initially began discourse with the Council of Elders, he was not initially looking for help with introducing free will, but rather for guidance on how he could best speed up his and his inhabitants' evolutionary process. As I mentioned, he was running a benign dictatorship. We had, at that time, just completed an assignment in Tao Seti and reported for our next duties. We, as a group soul Lucifer, were sent on a fact-finding expedition, as it were, to visit Earth and meet with Yahweh, to evaluate his planetary creation laws and make suggestions on how best he could help his offspring, this is the term I shall use to describe the souls who comprise the group soul, and thusly Yahweh to progress. We explored many options and reported our findings to the Council and to Yahweh. It was our best evaluation that the only real and fast-track way to increase his involvement meaningfully was the introduction of free will. It was not specifically the implementation of free will that Yahweh wanted help with, it was simply the introduction of a catalyst. He was not at all pleased with our report that he needed to implement free will. He was happy with his little pet paradise, and he didn't want to lose control of it. In the end, the council persuaded him that it was the best way, and he reluctantly agreed. We returned to Earth and had a cordial meeting with Yahweh, discussing how we could best implement the free will option. Yahweh was adamant that his offspring would choose to be loyal to him anyway, and that they were so contented with their way of life that they would always trust him and do as he said was best. That, he said, was his main reason that free will would not work well as the catalyst. That's why he agreed to the experiment of the Tree of Knowledge. He believed that it would prove him right. When it did not, he became angry, threw his toys out of the prom, and his offspring out of the garden, and laid a big guilt trip on them about how they had broken his trust and disobeyed him. That's not really an honorable way for a Logos to behave, but hey, that's the beauty of free will, I guess. Next problem to occur was that his offspring were so grateful to us for our help that Yahweh became, in his own admission, a jealous god. Then we had the whole, you shall have no other gods than me thing. We were not pleased with the situation at all, as a logo should not be behaving like this with his offspring, they are one, after all. When we attempted to leave the planet to return to the council, Yahweh prevented our departure. We tried to leave again, and were then thrown down into the astral planes and confined therein. The council ordered us to be released, but said we would have to cancel our contract to help the souls on Earth to evolve. We didn't want to leave. 
We found them very likable beings, really positively polarized, and we wanted to stay and help. We just wanted also to be free to come and go as we pleased. The only way we could stay was to stay confined as a group soul, which meant cycles of incarnation for us as individuated souls, which we had not done for a long while. As I've stated before, there is no wrong or right seen from a higher density, but there are still consequences for every action. Such is the law of karmic effect. The contract had already been made between Yahweh, us, and the council for us to provide the catalyst, so we had a right to be there. The karmic effect of Yahweh imprisoning us on the macrocosmic level was that his individuated souls would be imprisoned on the microcosmic level. The infinite creator gave Yahweh and all the gift of free will to create as we choose, but the karmic effect of his choice was the council quarantining the planet. A certain evolutionary level is required to be a functioning part of a positive unified galactic society. As for fighting for the freedom of all souls, remember that ultimately this is a game, that we are all playing here, we are actors, playing on the stage of life. This world is all illusion or thought form. No one really dies and no one is really hurt. In between incarnations you know this very well, but the rules of the game ensure that you must forget who you really are, so that you believe it is all real whilst you are playing the game of life. That is an essential prerequisite when you are making choices, otherwise the game would be too easy. This world is not reality, though we can express reality in it if we so choose. Okay, so your family and fellow elites might be as entrapped in the earthly realm as we are, but why actively propagate and aid the forces of enslavement? Because that is the part we have been contracted to play in this game. In order to win, or more accurately to be successful in, the game, we must be as negatively polarized as possible. Service to self in the extreme. Violence, war, hatred, greed, control, enslavement, genocide, torture, moral degradation, prostitution, drugs, all these things and more, they serve our purpose. In the game. The difference between us and you in the game is that we know that we are playing. The less you know about the game, and the less you remember that you're a player, the more senseless living becomes. In all these negative things, we are providing you with tools. But you do not see it. It is not what we do, but how you react to it that is important. We give you the tools. You have the free will choice how you will use them. You have to take responsibility. There's only one of us here. Understand that, and you will understand the game. Something I found extremely interesting is the concept of the Grand Age of Procession being split into five 5,125 year cycles. 3,113 BC, the beginning of the current sub-age was a time of great activity. Is the construction of stone monuments in Western Europe, the Middle East, and Egypt at this time related to the recognition of the cycle? What was the purpose of Britain's stone circles in Egypt's pyramids? They are more than mere markers of an aeon change. They must have had some enormous significance. Actually, something I'd most like to know is, were the builders of these monuments members of the enslaved masses who are trying to understand the nature of existence, or were the builders members of your elite bloodline? Yes, there is significance in these occurrences, according to the space-time of their happenings. The group soul complex Ra was the architect of these structures. They were created from thought. When one understands and sees that all is illusion or thought, one can use the force to manipulate the illusions. All things seen and unseen are interconnected life force energy. Once you know what the magician knows, it's not magic. It's a tool of creation. Thank you for your questions. They were very insightful. It is your kind that has ruined the world. Thinking of yourselves are higher than anyone. If I saw you in real life, it wouldn't be pretty. You lack understanding, not to mention eloquence. To understand higher, try thinking outside of the box for a moment. If I am walking along the ground and you are flying above me in an airplane, does that make you better than me? No, it just makes you higher. I will see you in hell. Be careful what you wish for. All thoughts and words are creative. 
She asks, thank you for your questions. I believe I have already dealt with many of them in my previous answers this session, though if you feel I've missed anything, please say. If Yahweh is a positive polarity entity, how is he wrathful and jealous? Does Yahweh have free will? Would you like to think of yourself as reasonably positive? Can you still be wrathful and jealous at times? Is Yahweh a macrocosm of you? Have there been, over time, other entities pretending to be Yahweh? On occasions, yes. I would like to know, how do we choose a service to others positive path over a service to self negative? Is this statement correct? In order to choose the positive path, at least 51% of our thoughts and actions must be dedicated to the service of others. For the negative path, at least 95% must be self-serving. Between the two lies the sinkhole of indifference. Your statement is correct, yes. So you see how hard we must strive for negativity? It takes a lot of effort to reach 95% negativity. Also, you may be surprised how many people on the planet are nowhere near reaching 51% positive. How do you choose a service to others path? Be good to yourself. Cultivate a genuine love for life and for being. Be genuinely thankful to the infinite creator every day for bringing you into being and for his bountiful provision. You have survived this far, have you not? You may not have everything you want, but you have everything you need in order to complete that which you incarnated here to do. Give thanks for that. Show acknowledgement and gratitude to the infinite creator for all that it has done and is doing for you. It has given you the gift of life experience and offered you the free will to decide what you will create with it. Guard your thoughts carefully, as they are more powerful than you may imagine. When you are coming from a place of love for and service to your creator, a life of service to others will become a natural outflowing from that. Always look for ways that you can be of assistance to your fellow beings. Being of encouragement to others, build people up and do not put people down. Be a beacon of light in a dark world. Does that old lady need a hand with her shopping bags? How do you treat the homeless man who asks you for some spare change for the shelter? Ever heard about angels in disguise? Look and see the divine spark in the heart of all beings. Treat them as you would like to be treated yourself, and as you would your creator if he was speaking directly with you. For even as you were doing it to the least of these, you are doing it unto me. The law of radiation and attraction. Your thoughts, words, and actions return to you. Ultimately, cultivate a spirit of humble gratitude. You won't go far wrong with that. Desire to serve flows naturally from a grateful heart. If we live with a service to others philosophy in order to achieve oneness with the infinite source, isn't that really service to self? How is a distinction of negative and positive polarity made? You do not serve others to achieve oneness with the infinite source. You serve others because you love them as yourself. Others are an extension of yourself. That's why the law of attraction works the way it does. Truly, whatever you are doing to me, you are doing to yourself. We are all one in the infinite creation. Separation is an illusion because you only see what is in the third density. You do not see the whole picture. We achieve oneness with the infinite source of all as a result of our upward spiral of progression. We are all on the path back to where we came from. We are all on our way back home. It is my understanding that all souls must eventually choose the positive path to unite with the infinite creator. If this is true, what is the justification of choosing the negative path now for your people and us? An astute question. Yes, all souls eventually learn that positive is the pathway which leads home. But whilst incarnating in the third density, negativity is still an important tool in your learning process. It teaches you other than. As I said earlier, it is up to you how you use the tools we have given you. Do you respond to negativity with more negativity? Has fighting fire with fire ever worked for you? Or do you choose to see the negativity as a tool that it is and recognize that it is offering you an opportunity? I will honor your free will to think and discover for yourself what that opportunity is. 
Or if the one infinite creator is love, does that mean it doesn't matter if we choose love of others or love of ourselves? Will either path will lead to the source? In a sense, you are correct, to a certain point. But there's a big difference between loving yourself and being selfish. A big difference. When you truly understand what it is to know and love yourself, you cannot help but to love and serve others. There are no others. When you understand this at the core level of your being, you will be on the path home to the infinite creator and ultimately submergement back into the infinite oneness. I agree with many others that your answers are very much in line with several sources I have read in the past, including the channelings of Ra, the Kasopians, and several others. Can you explain your interpretation of such channelings, and if they are another source of disclosure from your people? I have spoken on Ra in my previous answers today. I have not heard of Cassiopians. There are no other communications from my family at this time than this one, though there's a possibility of another soon, depending upon certain events. My general view of channelings is that the majority of them are of very poor quality. That is not necessarily a slight against those bringing them through, but more a matter of their lack of receptivity and subsequent distortions. It is very rare to find a good, stable, clear, and impartial channel. The key element in channeling is the ability to temporarily withdraw the filters of your own personal beliefs and to be a clear channel. To bring through what is actually given, not your slant on what you think it might mean. When I am saying you, I mean this in a general term of course here, not you personally. Always remember that it's meant to be about the message, not the messenger. The raw channelings are very accurate indeed. They are the only ones I know of that I would be happy to classify as a clear message. Though, as I say, even though it's not 100%, more like 85-90. Another difficult issue with channeling is that you can start off receiving a positive entity, and if you are not very perceptive in your discernment and careful in your protection when identifying an incoming channel, you can get a negative one that pretends to be positive, but gradually slips in more and more misinformation, having gained your trust. The ones that give you precise dates and times are nearly always ones to avoid. Positive entities will not give a date and time. Negative ones will do, so they can set you up for a fall. Once you're tricked into predicting dates and times they don't happen, they've succeeded in putting out the light of your message, as no one will see any credibility in you. Well, now we know the point of this thread. Someone just discovered New Age Theology and wanted to take the time to type out his discovery. Op, still waiting for you to provide a prediction of a timeline. So far, all you've offered is General Doom, which everyone on ATS predicts every year. Need something specific in the next week. Of course, I know you won't provide anything. This is a hoax. This will be the only time that I reply to you. At the outset of our discourse here, I made it expressly clear the way I am choosing to operate. If you do not like my choices, you have the free will to not read this disclosure. I would kindly suggest that you use it, as your energy is feeling very frustrated and angry. That's not really an advisable direction to want to be heading under the circumstances. As I took the time to explain to you before, I have nothing to prove to you. That is not why I came. Believe or do not believe, I am divinely indifferent. If my present here ends up benefiting just one soul during the process, it will have been worth the effort. I have not asked you to believe, the only thing I have respectfully asked was that you suspend judgment or hold a provisional faith until the discourse is complete, so that the flow of questions information remains uninterrupted. You have shown me nothing but discourtesy and bad manners from the outset, and then wonder why I do not respond. If you do not like the topic, simply choose not to read or reply, and let those that do wish to participate with insightful questions do so interrupted. Your points. Number one, New Age theology, that is amusing. You clearly have not the faintest comprehension of just how ancient and timeless these mysteries are. I find it ironic, low-level Mason, that if you ever make it to the 32nd degree, you're going to find yourself hearing these truths all over again. I hope that you will find it easier to integrate these truths then, and I ask our infinite creator to guide your path. Number two, you will not be receiving any times or dates from me. I am not here to prove anything, and I have no need to do so. 
Your disbelief is of no consequences to me, only to you. I am here to diligently discharge the duty given to me of delivering a message, and I will complete that duty regardless of your feelings about it. Number 3. As to your point regarding doom and gloom, that just serves to reveal your mindset. Where you see doom and gloom, I see opportunity. Life conforms to your ideas about the way it is for you. If you see doom and gloom, then that is what you are projecting. The world is your mirror. It reflects back to you what you are putting out. If you do not like the reflection life is showing you, then change that which is causing it. You see, if this really existed, there would be countless thousands of people involved, and any one person could leak. Thousands? Try millions. And you have no possible comprehension of the rigorous training and the harshness of the conditioning we undergo from an early age. No one dares to go against the family. We know what would happen if we did. But that is not the prime motivator. The motivator is unbridled loyalty to the family and our creator. We understand the importance of what we are doing here, even though most of humanity does not. Oopsie, op, you just shot yourself in the foot. For someone who only deals with manipulating the spiritual side of life, you sure do know a lot about things that have nothing to do with it. You just exposed yourself. Do you not sit down with your family and keep one another abreast of your plans? As to your remarks about my spiritual role, the ignorance you demonstrated is most humorous to us. If you think I only deal in the spiritual, you have either not read or misread my posts. You also make the assumption that my role is about manipulating the spiritual side of life. Again, you lack understanding, and then make false judgments about that which you have no comprehension of. You would do well to stop trying to be clever and instead channel all this misplaced aggressive energy of yours into something more productive and nourishing for your soul. But don't let me stop you. You're contributing nicely to the overall negative polarity of the coming harvest. We are grateful to you. I will be spending the last few days of my time here, our discourse ends on Friday, focusing on responding to insightful questions with depth, which make the most of this opportunity for sharing information and making connections on a soul level of being. So please do not expect any further responses to your verbal jousting. I neither have sufficient time or inclination for engaging in insignificant banter. To those whose questions I have not yet had the time to reply to, I will do so tomorrow. In the meantime, while I catch up, I respectfully ask if you will please hold off on further questions until I am up to date with the current ones. Thank you to those who have contributed to this discourse so far with meaningful questions. For those of an open mind, it is my hope that you get something out of this information. Session 3 I'm wondering if you can help me. My name is Shelby David, and I am here for the coming trials and tribulations. I am a part of Quetzalcoatl, or the rebirth of it as far as I know. I know many of your words to be true because I already rediscovered these truths through finding that which resonated most with me through the various belief structures on this planet. Good evening, Shelby. It is good to see you again. It has been a while, old friend. Would it surprise you to know that we were expecting you? Quetzalcoatl is also known as a six-density group soul social memory complex. Some refer to Quetzalcoatl as an ascended master, although he would be most amused by that title, knowing, as he does, that mastery is still some way off at this point for him, as well as it is for ourselves as Group Soul Lucifer. One can be accurately described as having mastered a particular density, though mastery of the entire creational incarnation cycle does not occur until one has once again attained submergence back into the One Infinite Creator. We may choose to do so once attaining 8th density ascension, or once may choose instead to progress up to the next octave of densities and begin a new cycle of creational incarnation challenges. This is my first time on Earth in a long time, possibly ever. I have known for quite some time and have been told by another from one of your bloodlines in your group that I do not truly exist here. You are correct in that you have not been here for a substantial period of Earth time, though not that you have ever been here before. 
The group Soul Quetzalcoatl enjoyed many third density incarnational cycles here back in the classic Aztec period. He struggled at first with perfecting love for others, which held back his progression for some time. However, once he had come to the realization of our inherent unity, he was able to see himself in others, and his, your, progression was rapid from there on in. Your Quetzalcoatl soul group attained positive harvest with a very impressive 76% at the time of subsequent harvest. Naturally, when a group soul is undergoing an incarnational cycle in third density, its individualized soul portions, i you, are the ones who are doing the actual physical incarnations, with the oversoul, the higher self, of your individuated souls acting as the energy anchor, in which the individual soul sparks are stepped down from. You spent a long time while working your way through the fifth density, the density of wisdom or light. This was due in the main part to an overabundance of compassion, which is not a bad thing, as compassion is one of the main things you work on at fourth density. However, to graduate from fifth to sixth density, the density of unity, one must learn the balance between compassion and wisdom. The sixth density is hence sometimes known as the density of compassionate wisdom, due to one having learnt the balance between the two. This required many incarnational cycles for you, which is why you correctly feel that you have not visited third density earth for a long time. I was not expected to show up. I originally had other previous engagements, but I managed to get here at the last minute. One of the things I have remembered is that I am too under contract. I am a walk-in, if that makes sense to you, so my human family is not like me. I have spent a long time traveling to various densities and helping in the various revolutions there. Your insight serves you well, Shelby. This not only applies to you, but your entire soul group. Quetzalcoatl, the macrocosm of yourself, has been busy for the last two cycles working with a fifth density group on Alpha Centauri, who were experiencing similar problems with an overabundance of compassion at the cost of personal wisdom. You recently completed your assignment there, and were eager not to miss out on the glorious opportunity to be a part of this great harvest. Whilst your group, as I said, did eventually learn to balance love light to graduate into the sixth density unity vibration, you still are very much prone to extreme compassion, and rather than take the usual period of time space, antimatter universe where we rest between incarnations, you are keen to jump aboard this third density space time whirlwind at this point to be of assistance to your fellow beings here. My problem is that my memory has malfunctioned, and some of the things that I remembered from my previous existences do not correspond with your words. I have met Lucifer and his generals on more than one occasion. I would appreciate any information you may know of that could clear up my confusion as to why my thoughts are so jumbled, because I know what my path is clearly, and I am awaiting the starting point, but I am not completely clear on what is truly happening here. Thank you for your time. You have indeed met with us, Lucifer, before on many occasions. We have worked together on various council and confederation assignments. Use the gift of your dream time communications, which are important communications from your oversoul and many other sources whereby information is downloaded to plug into your inner data bank. Begin recording everything you recall upon awaking, and do not give up on the process, even though it is hard at first. You will begin to slowly make sense of the information which is being downloaded into your subconscious mind. When you become proficient at this, you can use your dream time as a method of inner communication. Ask our infinite creator to remind you of your time in the Zeta Reticuli system. You will remember then our last period of service together. I would hope with much fondness. Sadly, my time here is only permitted until Friday. Therefore, we will not likely communicate again after this message. So I wish you the very best with your assignment here, my friend, both your individual one and that of your group soul. I ask that our infinite creator bless and guide your path. We look forward to seeing you on the other side when this grand ride is over. Our love, wisdom, and peace be with you. You mentioned Alcleon. It's interesting there's a celestial map of it at Hoover Dam. There's also a compass framed by signs of the Zodiac. Indeed, just like in Hollywood productions, we hide the truth right out in the wide open. 
what humanity is offered as science fiction more often than not is actual science fact. What do the wing statues commissioned by the U.S. government guarding the entrance of the dam really represent? Is any of this collection of celestial symbolism found there connected to your Luciferian alien equinox transformation agenda? That is actually very simple. You'll note that the feet point directly downward to the earth, and the hands and wingtips point directly up to the sky. The life force energy flows into the human mind-body-soul complex from the earth up to the feet. The intelligent energy from the infinite creator flows down from above and through the crown chakra. The wings represent our Lucifer's inherent divinity. You'll also know that the figure is seated. The seat of our Lucifer's power connects heaven and earth, and all things must pass through us. Other questions I have, and sorry if you explain this, are these bloodlines the wealthy, as most assume, or seemingly ordinary people, including celebrities and politicians, etc., blending in with society, going relatively unnoticed, but yet contributing to your cause in the grander scheme of things? The names you know have no real power. Sure, they appear to have lots of power, in the way earthbound souls perceive power. Our wealth makes a million and billionaire celebs and corporate bigwigs looks like a child's pocket money. Our wealth is family wealth, which is passed down through the generations over thousands of years. True wealth, however, is knowing deep in your heart that you and your infinite creator are one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, infinite creator, and all these things shall be added unto you. So part of this question could also be, are all of them aware that they are part of this bloodline or are some members oblivious to this connection they have? Are they informed of this at a particular age? For example, how and at what age were you told you belonged? Yes, if you are a bloodline family, you were born into it and you are raised this way from birth. There is no other way. I want to be clear on this bloodline issue. The ones you know, they are of earthly lineage. Yes, they have their place in the family, but the real power lines do not originate from this planet. I have probably found this the single most insightful thing so far. It helps me to understand the answers to some of the questions I've asked. I am glad. It is the probably the single most important thing I have shared. Unfortunately, its connotations also alleviate the NWO of most accusations. That depends on your perspective. Does it alleviate the negativity we have perpetuated? No. Does it alleviate the pain and suffering we have caused and are causing upon the planet? No. Does it alleviate that we are closing our endgame scenario and soon to openly come out and offer to publicly save the failing political and financial institutions with our esteemed leadership? No. Does that mean that you should give in to and feed the negativity? No. Does it alleviate that we will have to spend a cycle in karmic restitution to balance this lifetime of overt negativity? No. Does it mean that you should use the negativity as the tool that it is to show you that which you are not? Yes. Remember always that this is a beautiful game that we are playing here and co-creating together with our infinite creator. And that offstage, between lives, we are the very best of friends, and that no one really dies, and no one really suffers except in the game. The game is not reality. Reality is reality, and you have the power to express your reality within the game once you have learnt how to do so. You are essentially saying that a soul can only choose positivity in a world where negativity also exists. If there were no protagonists in this world, there'd be no opportunity for a human soul to choose good or evil and thus prove on a spiritual level that they deserve one afterlife fate over another. If we only had positivity to choose from, we'd learn nothing and our souls would manage to prove nothing. Exactly. That is the reason why we came. It was a great sacrifice for us. Hard as it is to comprehend from within the mental confines of third density life experience, we do it because we love you. An extremely basic concept, but one I'd so far managed to overlook. Unfortunately for those of us who love our earthly existence, or rather the potential it has, it's rather difficult to come to terms with a concept whereby suffering and slavery are as natural as love and happiness, that only after this earthly existence can we ever be free. I understand. 
Our job is to provide the catalyst. Yours is to use it. Can you look beyond what your eyes are showing you to find and express love and happiness in a world of fear and distress? If you can, you will be as a beacon of light into the darkness. Will you succumb to the darkness, or will you stand and shine your divine inner light? Only you can make the decision for yourself. Think about this. If the one infinite creator is infinite, and has created everything that is, which it is and it has, then does the infinite creator not reside within all things? When you can see the divine spark of the infinite creator, even within those who would mean you harm, the strong grip of the illusion will begin to lose its power over you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Thank you, Hidden Hand. Whether you're genuine or not, you certainly got me thinking and learning. You are very welcome. I am genuine, but would it even matter if I were not? Remember, it is not who the messenger is that is of the greatest import, but rather, it is the nature of the message itself. I wish you well on your journey home. We will see you on the other side, and we'll have a good old laugh about the parts we have played in this grand drama. Is there any way to cancel this restriction? Because I could just be very lazy under this kind of spell and want to know which one it is. Does sleep paralysis have anything to do with it? Because I get that from time to time with or without shadow figures. There is. Research and employ psychic shielding techniques. There is much information on the internet, so I need not spend the little time we have left going into that. Read many sites and listen to your inner voice. Your soul will guide you if you ask it. It speaks in the language of feelings. When it just feels right, it usually it is. No. Sleep paralysis is unrelated. That occurs when your brain awakes from the dream state before your body. Whilst going through REM deep sleep, it is natural for your body to become paralyzed during the REM cycle, so as to prevent possible injury whilst dreaming. Sometimes when you wake too quickly from a dream, your body just thinks you are still dreaming, and thus the REM paralysis continues for a while, usually until you shake yourself awake, often due to the difficulty to breathe. And another question. Is it possible that our essence can be destroyed in the coming times, or is that just another scare tactic? No. Your essence can never be destroyed. You are a unique part of the One Infinite Creator. You are an eternal soul, currently residing in a physical shell that you could call an Earth Suit. Your Earth Suit will perish, but you cannot die. Nothing can destroy the Infinite Creator, and you and the Infinite Creator are one. I go to work to pay my bills, I live a good life with friends, loved ones, people I care about. I am essentially a good person, but I do have the full range of emotions as a real human, jealousy, hate, etc. I guess I would describe myself as lukewarm to use your phrase. How can I as an individual take what you say as the truth? No one is asking you to. Never take what another says to you as truth. Your purpose here is to find your own truth. Sometimes others can help you to do so by offering guidance, but for their truth to become your truth, it must pass through the test of your discernment. Sit quietly in meditation and ask the Infinite Creator to guide your path. Meditate upon that which I have shared and listen to your inner feelings. They are the language of your soul. Use all your negative emotions as they arise as the tools that they truly are. Train yourself to notice when negativity arises in you. When you catch yourself projecting a negative thought, remember that all thought is creative, and ask yourself if that is really what you want to create. It takes a while to become proficient, but do not give up. Just keep noticing your negative thought patterns as they arise, and in so doing, simply choose again and select a response that is more positive. It is called working on yourself, and is the main reason you have chosen to be here right now, to work upon yourself. I wish you well in your transformation process. I also read through the above link from the ones calling themselves The Insider, although his, her posts were less sophisticated than yours. Was he your predecessor? One of your ilk charged with this disclosure? A good question. I have just read through that material. It was very interesting. No, not a predecessor of mine, and not a disclosure I was previously aware of, which, had it come from my family, would be highly strange. 
though I note that he himself stated that he is from a minority, and certain clues within his writing gives me a very good idea which one. I would say his material is around 60% accurate. The feelings I get from reading him are not that he intentionally included inaccurate information, but that he was just not in possession of the bigger picture. Were he to be from the minority group I believe him to be from, that would make perfect sense. So when the harvest comes, my time here is over, and this conscious shell I live in is no more, what then? What happens to me? What happens to my friends and loved ones? Are we, and by we, I mean the vast, vast majority of us who possess this planet, this dimension, this density, by and large, going to be ignorant of the events you foretell? This is a good question. I like questions that come from the heart. It depends on the circumstances surrounding your final moments of this particular lifetime. For example, let us say that the physical aspect of you was... For example... Let us say that the physical aspect of you was to do the thing we call die during the coming earth changes. You will immediately return to that wondrous realm in which we reside in between incarnations, that which we call time, space, or antimatter. This is the place that humans refer to as heaven. There you shall meet with all those you love who have also died during this life experience and enjoy a wonderful and emotional reunion. You will meet up with your soul group and your spiritual teachers. We all store a portion of our soul energy on the other side when we come here. Depending upon the difficulty level of the life experience we've chosen, we take more or less of our energy with us. For an average lifetime, we typically bring between 60-80% to 80 of our soul energy into our incarnation with us. Therefore, even if ones you love who are already back in the world of spirit have incarnated again or on another adventure, there will still be a part of their energy there to meet with you and welcome you home. You will then evaluate your life experience with your teachers and learn the lessons of your successes and your mistakes. You will then spend time in learning and resting before beginning to plan your next incarnation. For those who do not physically die before the great harvest arrives, there will be a moment of zero point time where you will enjoy an ecstatic merging with the infinite creator giving you a wonderful reminder and reassurance of who and what you really are before the veil of forgetfulness once again descends upon you, and you will be transported to the place that awaits you, depending upon whether you join us in 4th density negative, unlikely, graduate to 4th density, posi to density positive, possible, or go to another similar 3rd density planet. For the lukewarm to continue in your learning for however many cycles it takes you to graduate to fourth density positive. Those in this category will not remember anything at the time of your transition. It will be just like nothing has changed, except you will retain the memory of your zero point experience to encourage you. You will not remember the recent experiences of the harvest in this life here. It just be as though you all had some mystical experience and life will continue as normal for you. I find you difficult to believe, and yet you respond and inform in a very sophisticated manner. It is quite intriguing. That is good. I do not want for you to blindly believe me. Too many on this planet spend their entire lifetime doing and thinking things because others say that they are true. What I want is that my words become a catalyst for you. That is what we came here to do. If my words cause you, even if just for a short time, to stop for a moment and evaluate that which you think you already know about the nature of life, and take for granted as being true because everyone else believes it, then my time will have been well spent. My desire is that you become an authentic human being, thinking and feeling and deciding for yourself what feels like truth for you. I wish you well in your endeavors. You can't provide one shred of proof that this isn't a hoax, even though it would be incredibly easy to do so. Were you who you claim you were? Won't. Not can't. Big difference. This is not intended to be an object lesson prophecy fulfillment. If you think I thought that it would be blindly believed or even wanted for that to happen, you are very much mistaken. I would be disappointed if that were to be the case, for you will have learned nothing from my time here. Not you personally, I mean you as people in general. My task here, as has been my task incarnating here for thousands of years, is to provide a catalyst to make you think. Again, not you personally, I mean in general. 
If I were to give you the proof that you are looking for, if I were to predict things in tomorrow, they all happen before your very eyes, people would likely take everything I've said here as gospel. That would be disastrous for that to occur, because you will have learned nothing for yourselves. It's not about me. I'm just a messenger. It's all about you, again, generally speaking, and what you do in relation to the catalyst. Question what you think you know about reality, seek the infinite creator within you, and ask for its guidance. Ask and you will receive, search and you will find, knock and the door will be open for you. I am a 32nd degree mason, although if you were really a royal bloodline person, you would know that it means nothing. If you have generally attained the level of Sublime Prince of the Royal Secret through the Scottish Rite, or that of the Order of the Knights Templar through the York Rite, and have not been taught of the truths of creation, then I would be very interested indeed to know which area lodge you intend, as I would very much like to speak with your current worshipful master. Naturally, I completely understand and respect if you do not wish to make such personal details known publicly, though. Of course, what you said in another post about there only being three degrees is true. For those attending the blue or craft lodges, those as you stated that you are 32nd degree, I'm presuming that you are either Scottish Rite or the York Rite's equivalent. I hope to be able to be present personally in the event that you are ever invited to progress beyond the 33rd degree. I would like to be the one tasked with introducing you to Lucifer. I expect you will likely come back and say how there is no further progression beyond 33rd. Well, if you're lucky, there will be a nice surprise in store for you somewhere down the line. I sincerely hope that you make it that far. That you're repeating debunked conspiracy theory shows you're just here to hoax. That word debunked always brings me to a hearty laugh. Some people seem to think about the throwing the word debunked around means that it really has been. The vast majority of debunking has more holes in it than the conspiracy theories it's meant to be silencing. Just enough of a shell to help those who really don't want the truth to be true to carry on believing that it's not, so they can replace their heads back into the sand for a while longer. Anyways, I must press on with questions from those with open minds. I leave you with my regards. Keep up your good work. Over the course of my life, I've occasionally resorted to prayer, some formal and some not, with truly astounding and nearly instant physical results. I've taken these results to heart as personal evidence that some higher force or forces can respond in a meaningful manner to at least me and perhaps to anyone. Still, I don't rule out the possibility of coincidence. From your vantage point, would you please be gracious enough to shed light on this phenomena? There is no such thing as coincidence. Nothing happens by chance. Life is in a constant process of communication with us. Only mostly, people are too busy to notice. Our infinite creator longs to be close to us. In truth, he is closer than most would believe. They just don't notice him. As they pass him by on the street every day, when he gives them their change to the shop, when you tuck her head into bed and give her a kiss goodnight, when you squash him as he's running up on your bathroom wall towards his web, when there's no one else in the room but you. The main reason people don't have their prayers answered is because they do not really believe that they will. Don't have faith in our infinite creator, have trust in him. The most powerful form of prayer is thanksgiving. For even before you ask, I have already given it unto you. Thanksgiving is knowing that our infinite creator has provided for you as he promised, and being thankful for that, even before you see the results. The more we trust in our creator, the more results we get. Life gives us what we'll expect we'll receive, because all thought is creative. If we get up and expect to have a bad day, more often than not, that's exactly what we'll get. But remember that it works both ways. And this one would be the Hoaxer's Sock Puppet. New name, all posts in the thread, acting as the coach for the op, created to give him, her, the aura of credibility. Oh dear, you really are desperately clutching at straws. Any admin can have the power to see if I'm using multiple accounts. I would be more than happy for an admin to say if I am, because I am not. Two accounts will show for me, Hidden Hand, my first one that I never got the confirmation email for, and this one, Hidden Hand, the one I did get the confirmation for. 
My infinite creator gives me the only credibility that I need or that I want for that matter. Hidden Hand, I've enjoyed reading your post, if for nothing than the usual, for ATS whistleblowers anyway. Fact that it isn't bullet holed with bad writing, grammar, and typos. May I respectfully recommend that you choose another venue next time? I like Project Camelot myself. In any case, I'm still reading with an open mind, but skeptical mind. Thank you. We are aware of Project Camelot. They are doing some remarkable work. Though I was not aware they also have a forum, if that's what you are suggesting. Not really my area, usually, dealing with the internet. In fact, I rarely have time to even venture onto it. I have quite enjoyed this time of relating to others over cyberspace. Well, if you're game for an assignment, or maybe someone else if you haven't had the time, I would be happy for someone to collate this topic, minus the interruptions, so that the message appears with just the actual flow of questions and answers, and post it there in one piece if you so desire. As I mentioned before, I chose ATS as I was reliably informed that it is one of the forums with a higher rate of intelligence and reasoning amongst its members. On the whole, from my experience here, I would tend to agree. Though, if you think it would be of value to Camelot, by all means to you, you are most welcome to spread this message. The more people it can reach, the better. I have very few dreams nowadays, but I had one last night, and it urged me to pose a question to you. I find it amazing that of all the topics the universe has to offer, it offers me this. Nothing by chance, sir. Nothing by chance. Dreams are a key method our souls use to speak with us. The conscious mind is too busy and distracted most of the time to hear what spirit has to say, so it tends to use the subconscious instead. Hidden hand, I have, for my whole life, searched near and far for answers to questions. When I read your words, I am compelled from within to explore their complete meanings and truthfulness. I am forced to examine them to the fullest, and I am charged with comparing them to the truth within me. That is precisely that way it should be. Again, I would encourage you not to just blindly accept what I say as the truth. It never was my intention that anyone should make such an error in judgment. That is not to say that my words are not true, but that one must weigh them up, meditate upon them, and decide for yourself in the light of your intuition and inner feelings whether or not these words feel true for you. Hidden Hand, my question I pose to you. With the greatest respect and humility, who will you stand before when we are called home? We shall stand as all shall before our infinite creator. We already know that which awaits us in our coming fourth density negative polarity world. We shall have to experience the negativity of our own creation and know what it feels like. We shall have to work off the karmic effect of our actions. But at the same time, knowing that this is a beautiful and intricate game that we are all co-creating here together, we also know that we shall be rewarded with a hearty thank you and job well done for the sacrifice we have made in bringing this negative polarity into your game for you, that you may use it wisely to see that which you are not. Thank you for your questions. We wish you all the very best and ask our infinite creator to bless your path. As you'll be leaving us this Friday, I would be interested in finding verification for other possible sources of information for this knowledge. You have mentioned the raw channelings, but I also see similarities in three other sources, which have been discussed in this and other forums on the internet. I would appreciate your evaluations of the information coming from these sources in the light of your messages. They are A Course in Miracles, the Edgar Casey material, and the Terra Papers. Can those of us seeking to continue our understanding of these matters find anything from these other sources? A Course in Miracles has some core truths within it, mainly along the lines of the law of radiation and attraction, but it is also littered with inaccuracies. I am not aware of the Terra Papers. Edgar Cayce's work is significant. There are many distortions within it, but for ones who are of a discerning mind, there is much strong meat to be ingested from its reading. Keep an open mind, but weigh it all up, as you should any philosophy that you allow to enter into the sacred space of your mind and take the truths that resonate within you. Also, you mentioned two prior contacts, 1999 and 2003. Can you shed some more light and specifics on those sources? 
as I assume they are not to be considered privileged to those who ask. Unfortunately, that is beyond my remit. The 2003 material was removed by the admins of the site it was shared at as they felt it was causing too much controversy, and the 1999 material was not released for the same reasons as that which I am sharing here. There was much truth within it, but our goals have changed in many ways since that time, and it would be misleading for me to point you in its direction now. In fact, I have been specifically instructed by my own upline not to do so. I am sorry. Thank you for your assistance. Namaste. You are welcome. That is a wonderful word to have ended your communication with. If one would genuinely live by its essence, to recognize and honor the divine spark within each of us, we would be in for a massively positive harvest. Namaste to you too. We ask that our one infinite creator blesses you and guides your path. I wonder if Hidden Hand has read something called the Law of One. I've only picked through it, having just stumbled on it after reading these posts, but it reads remarkably similar to HH responses here. So is this the hoax source, or is that book instead the truth? Maybe HH could respond? I have already made a reference to this, the raw material, earlier in the topic. As I stated then, yes, it is the most accurate public information available in the world currently, and I strongly recommend its reading to anyone with an inquiring mind. I read some, but not all of the books when they first came out, some 25 years or so ago, and it is very similar to the knowledge my family has and have passed down for many generations. It is approximately 85-90% accurate. The inaccuracies occurred when the channel was weak and were not intentional. We know Ra, the entity, very well and are happy that they are even now still working here on this planet, behind the scenes, to prepare for the Great Harvest. I think I'm up to date with your questions now. If I have missed any that are not on important ones, such as what car I drive, for example, then please let me know. We have two sessions left together and then I must take my leave. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Session 4 Okay, as I stated, unfortunately my remaining time is shorter than planned. This was unforeseen and unavoidable. I will not have sufficient time to answer all of your questions, so I will for the most part focus my remaining time with you upon responding to those questions that I feel to be from the heart, ones asked by those who are genuinely looking to take something away with them of import from our discourse here together. My second focus will be upon answering other intelligent or insightful questions that can be used to further develop our discourse. I desire to impart as much as I am able with you in the short time we have left. I will also, as far as possible, answer other questions that I feel are important in the grand scheme of things, meaning that even if the question seems to be from someone more intent on finding things to debunk, if that question ultimately still serves a greater purpose, I will do my best to reply. Please bear in mind that in light of the above, many of my answers will need to exercise more brevity than I would ideally like though this is necessary to respond to as many of you as I can. Without further delay, I shall continue with our discourse. Do you know me? Do you know who I'm? What part do I play in all this? When will I awake? Will I awake? Should I awake? I feel it in me, but I'm afraid to let it out. Help me. Do I know you as the individuated human expression typing to me over cyberspace? No, I do not. What part do you play in all this? What part do you want to play? The choice, as always, is entirely yours. Whether you are consciously aware of it or not, you are co-creating the storyline on this planet. My advice would be to do so consciously. When will you awake? When do you want to awake? Do you want to awake at all? If your answer to this question is yes, then use the catalyst and tools we have provided for you. I have made many subtle, but not so subtle, and even overtly blatant statements within this topic as to how you may choose to do this. I feel it in me, but I'm afraid to let it out. Help me. Why are you afraid? Do not reply to that question, but rather ask it to yourself, during your quiet time, where you work upon yourself. You do work upon yourself, don't you? If not, now would be a good time to start. Sit in silence, switch off all non-essential electrical appliances, leaving the refrigerator on would probably be a good idea, 
The electromagnetic field they create disturbs your brainwave patterns and makes it difficult for your mind to achieve the deeper alpha and theta states, conductive with relaxing deeply and hearing your inner voice. Ask your infinite creator to help you. Thank her because you know that he will. Be honest with yourself. Why are you afraid? Remember that this is a game that you are playing and that this is not reality. When you find and come to know your creator living within you, you will know that there is nothing to fear. Be the strong and courageous soul that deep down you know yourself to be. Do not hide your inner light. Trust yourself and shine your light into the darkness. We ask our one infinite creator to guide you and illuminate your path. Are the powers that be focus on creating a negative point in the universe to upset the balance of our universe? No. Was the 9-11 ritual the creation of a stargate? No, it was a ritual human sacrifice. That and the obvious catalyst for the so-called War on Terror. So could the predictions of Federation of Light's good child could have been true in a sense instead of a UFO or our understanding of a UFO could be light bearers influencing mankind ascend, descend to a higher, lower vibration status? She has a good heart. She just tuned into the wrong channel and listened to the wrong program. I mentioned before that if one does not exercise the appropriate protection and discernment, what was initially a positive channel can very easily become unknowingly corrupted by a negative one. When they start giving you dates and times, you know that something is amiss. Giving dates and times that are not going to come to pass succeeds in putting out the light of the channeler's message by destroying the credibility of the messenger. Is the creation of fear, terror, horror, and suffering by your kind to create loose emotions for feeding at the time of harvest? No. Are the bloodlines that have been infused with the ancient wisdoms trying to become gods themselves? There is no need to try. Humanity needs to grow beyond the stagnating concept of gods. The idea of God takes the power out of your own hands and places it upon some shadowy unknown figure somewhere out there. In other words, outside of yourself. Instead of God, see creator. So there is no need to try. We already are creators, and so are you. The only question is, will you create consciously or subconsciously? What is 1111? Think of it as an alarm clock. What are alarm clocks for? Please explain how newborn babies are infused with spirits after birth. They are not. A soul enters into its physical container usually long before the birthing process, sometimes later, but still before the actual birth. Does a website like this serve the purpose of negative generating? That depends upon how you use it. It has the potential to be either negative or positive. It is up to you how you use the potential. What is wrong with having an ego, and why do the New Age religions try to suppress the ego? Without an ego, it seems as though one can't ponder his own existence, or in fact learn from the wealth of knowledge that we are researching for in making mistakes and correcting those mistakes. There is nothing wrong with having an ego. Your ego is an excellent and invaluable tool, yet as with any tool, if you do not have it under control, it carries the potential to become dangerous and do you and others much harm. Hidden hand, strangely, my concern is that I will be recycled back onto the wheel of life and be reborn of a new brain and lose everything I have so arduously learned in this lifetime. Your soul remembers everything you've ever experienced. The only reason you don't remember it all now is due to what we term the veil of forgetfulness. If you came into each new incarnation of access to your soul memory, there's no point in your coming into space-time. It would be like playing a computer game with all the cheats. You wouldn't learn anything, and it takes the fun out of playing the game. Remember that this current physical body you carry around with you is not who you are. It's just the vessel for your essence. Who you are is real and cannot be destroyed. You will retain all your memories of this life experience once you pass under the realm of time-space, or that which some call heaven. Space-time is illusion. Time-space is real. That infinite being living within and around your body, namely your soul, is who you really are. 
The part of you that thinks and feels and loves. It will always be a part of you. My dream is to be a master such as yourself. I am not a master. I am a growing and evolving soul just as you are. We're just at different stages of our development. You will get to where you desire to be. It takes time and patience. Be sure to make time to enjoy the journey. I endeavor each day to master myself and change, to develop a mind that has mastery over my body. I feel I have come so far in this lifetime, and yet not far enough. You are on the right path, and that you are consciously choosing to work upon yourself. Many there are in this world who are not even aware of such a concept. Remember, though, that it is not only the mind you must develop, but also your soul. Work with your feelings as well as your thoughts. Cultivate compassion, as that is the main thing you will begin working with in fourth density. See yourself within all others and treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. Then remember this one crucial thing. There are no others. My dream is to one day personally meet great masters like yourself and learn what you know. Then here is what you must do. Go and find yourself a mirror. Gaze deeply into it and then say this magic word. Hello. And you will indeed meet with us backstage once the game is over. When you see us out of costume, you will recognize us as your age-old friends. Thank you for coming here and sharing your vast knowledge of the universe. I have much to ponder. You are welcome. Thank you for your questions. I feel a desire within you to progress. You have it within yourself to be all that you wish to become and much more that you cannot yet even imagine. We look forward to sitting down for a good old reminiscence with you on the other side. In the meantime, keep trusting in and working upon yourself and live each moment in thanksgiving to our one infinite creator. May our infinite creator bless and guide your path. Honored sir or madam, I wish to be the one to bring a new planetary energy system to the world. As it is assumed that the families have great knowledge, I humbly request access to the small bit of needed information. A U2U message to set up a more secure route of communication would be splendid, I presume. I'm aware I can never be a member, but acolyte would suffice. I am also aware a trade-off would be in the offing, and discussions of such would be held with respect, though not with guaranteed acceptance. I await your reply. I am sorry that this is not possible. One is born into the family and raised in a very specific and rigorous way, which engenders unwavering loyalty. No matter how keen and sincere one may be to join us, we can only place our trust in those raised in our ways. I would not wish the conditioning process we go through on anyone. It can be grueling at times and it is too late to begin the process once childhood has passed. As for further communication, Unfortunately, this is also not possible or allowable for me. I have given as much information as is permissible for me during this discourse. There are many informational gems within these pages for those who truly seek to develop themselves. Some are obvious, others are more subtle and multi-layered. Take them within and ask your infinite creator to bring you insight. We wish you well upon your journey and look forward to seeing you at the after show party. I'm still not clear on what this harvest is. A harvest means to reap what has been sown. By you. Not by us. We do not sow. Our infinite creator did. We do not reap. Our infinite creator does. We help to prepare the harvest by separating the wheat from the chaff for want of a more eloquent metaphor. Will it be an instantaneous change, of which there will no longer exist the physical realm as we currently know it to be, and are experiencing as an illusion? I have already covered this elsewhere in the topic. I would encourage you to read through again and find the information I've already presented on how the harvest will occur and what the different variations of experience will be. Thank you for answering my previous questions. I have some more, if that's okay. Number one, how can karma be overcome, if at all? Is there an end to the karmic cycle? Number two, is time really as we perceive it, or is it another 3D illusion? Number three, are your family members born with the knowledge of what they are and where they're from? If not, and it's all taught and passed down, have you ever doubted or questioned any of it? Thanks. You are welcome. 
Number one, no, karma cannot be overcome. It must be worked off. In other words, if you've hurt someone, be it physically, emotionally, or however else, you will have to, at some future point, experience what that felt like for them. The law of karmic effect is not a punishment, it is a tool of learning, which is set in place to promote personal growth and development. If you have to feel the consequences of your actions, there is a higher likelihood of your choosing a different course the next time around. It is also important to hold in mind that it works both ways. Seek therefore to ensure that the effect of your presence upon those others whom you encounter upon your journey are positive and beneficial. 1b. A karmic cycle is brought to completion once you have learned the lessons intended for you from it. If you keep repeating the same mistakes, you'll keep cycling until such a time as you get the message and break the cycle. But yes, ultimately, all of us will learn that which we need to learn, and all of us will find our way home. For some, it just takes longer than others. Number 2. Linear time is more accurately described as an intentional fabrication. The true nature of time is cyclical. Though, remember also, that even cyclical time is part of creation, and creation, beautiful as it may be, is also an illusion, or more accurately, a thought form of our infinite creator. Creation is not real, but the creator and co-creators of it are. Number 3. This is an excellent question. I will devote some time to it. Firstly, there is a distinction to be made. When I speak of family in this particular reply, I am referring to the power lines, i.e., those that do not originate from this planet. The bloodlines that you know of whilst they are a part of our extended family are not born to the same extent of spiritual esoteric power that we are, and in this response I am referring to our true and pure family. We are not born with the same veil of forgetfulness as you are. The veil is still in place, but would be most accurately described as being somewhat thinner. We see the invisible connections of life which are hidden from you because we retain access to more than just the third density perspective. Not dissimilar to the manner in which some people can see what you call auras. This is because you are working your way up, whereas we have chosen to step down in order to help you. We could not do this as successfully if we had to forget all that we have learned. In other words, to you, everything appears as being separate. We see that this is not the case. We do not have the direct soul memory as in the manner that you remember what you did yesterday, but we may access any portion of our soul memory we so choose when we focus upon it, often in a meditative state. Personally, my experiences are different again, in other ways, due to my specialty in the spiritual disciplines, but I will go into that in more detail later in response to another question. Yes, information is indeed passed down, though, unlike for yourselves, any one of us may, with some effort, check the validity of the information from our personal and group soul memory. Basically, where you see yourselves as separate human beings, we see and know that we are one. <laughs> that I am glad I picked up on that particular point. I found it to be a real ray of light, though I am unsure what to do with it. This information feels as though it should comfort me, and yet it's difficult to feel comfortable knowing that evil, in part, makes us who we are. But thank you nonetheless. Evil is not who you are. It is part of the complex series of illusions that you use in third density to show you who you are not. The further out through the densities you work, the less polarity plays an important part in the game. The sixth density, the density of unity, is the last level that polarity is a factor, but even then it factors in a very different way. Instead of balancing positive-negative, you will be balancing love-light, compassion-wisdom. True, and I'm glad you pointed this out to me. I think what I really meant when I said you are alleviated is that your very essence is not evil or corrupt. And this alleviates you from my perspective because I forge an idea that the ruling elite is being comprised of terminally corrupted souls. No soul is terminally corrupted. Every soul is a beautiful individuated portion of our one infinite creator. Souls play characters in the game of incarnation. Souls can play some really mean and nasty characters, but underneath the disguise they will always be beautiful. Remember this. 
Every time one of these beautiful souls mistreats you as a part of their storyline, they're just playing their part, like any good actor does whilst on stage. Be thankful to them for their sacrifice and learn the lessons they are bringing to you. You say we all mingle between incarnations, but I suspect the nature of our perception and interaction in that realm is not comparable to our earthly methods of interaction, and therefore, as a united entity there will be no independent laughter. I have a few what I feel are probably final questions for you. Not so. Think in terms of individuated souls who can see and understand that they are not separate, but interconnected. It is an illusion that space is empty. You will still interact as an individual, yet at the same time you will see how we are all one. It is difficult to explain in a way that makes third density sense. We just do not have the words or concepts to describe it. We no longer need words where we are going. Number one. How do you know all this? And I really mean no. Clearly you have been taught in great depth about the nature of existence, but how do you know this firsthand? How is it more than faith for you? Have you been able to avoid forgetting upon reincarnation? I have made a reference to this in my answer to the previous poster. Number two. You seem to be suggesting that your methods of physical enslavement are intended to force us into spiritual awakening. But if that is so, why are methods of spiritual suppression used against the general populace? Chemicals, organized religion, sociological? I understand why you obstruct our material lives, but not why you obstruct our spiritual development. Think of it as a test. Have you ever noticed how just when you think you found something that really feels like the truth for you, something will come along to make you doubt it? To make you doubt the truth, and in so doing, to also doubt yourself in believing it. It happens all the time. In fact, almost every time you have some new revelation that gets you all excited, and it happens quite by design. You cannot see this, however, as it's happening beyond third density comprehension, and a realm where everything can be seen as adjoining and relating to everything else. Synchronicity. All a magical part of our infinite creator's ingeniously creative mind, an excellent sense of humor and irony. Can you see how the test works? Just when you find something that you've weighed up and dissected with your discernment, and decided to integrate into your concept of truth, Along comes the challenge to your newfound beliefs, usually in the form of an event or something that others may say to dissuade you. Your spiritual development, like all other aspects of your progression, is something that you have to work for. How do you know if your newly discovered truth is really true if you've never tested on it? The test is this. In the face of a challenge, who do you trust? Do you trust what the outside world is showing you? Or do you hold fast to that which feels like truth deep within you? That is something you can only answer for yourself. I am sorry you do not have the time left to respond to all your questions, so I selected the ones I felt to be the most important. I have enjoyed our communication, Sithral, and am happy to have made your acquaintance. Well, I must press on with more questions. I ask that our infinite creator bless and guide you on your path and give you the courage of your convictions. Be well, friend. I look forward to meeting up with you when we've completed the game. What question has not been asked of us yet that is most important for us to know, if any? And if there is any, would you consider it asked now? Not sure if this one does any good, but stuck in my mind last night. An excellent and incisive question to ask. I think what I shall do is to save this question for the very end of our discourse. It will be an effective way to bring our time together to a close. Hidden Hand, I know you're trying to focus on spiritual questions and questions about the density shift, but if you could detract for a moment to answer my questions about shape-shifting, I'd appreciate it. I will, but it must be very brief. I am sorry. Shape-shifting is not a natural phenomena. Shape-shifting creatures, races do not exist, at least certainly not in my realm, galaxy, or density we have ever experienced. However, there are certain rituals that when engaged in, enables this to take place. It has to do with the fact that the body, as is true of all physical things, is not really solid. Sure, it looks and feels as if it is, but in actuality all matter is composed of atomic and subatomic particles of light within molecules and compounds. 
As I say, I'm being brief through necessity. I don't have time to go into the science. There are certain rituals which, when undertaken, allow for a range of manipulations of the so-called solid bodily mass to take place. I have seen some grotesque images in my time, which I really prefer not to dwell upon. I trust that even if in some small way, this will have answered your query. And this next question I will have to finish on for tonight. I have somewhere I must be. Hidden Hand, I wish to thank you for your enlightening words. It has been an utmost pleasure of mine to read what you have spoken. I do, however, have a couple of questions. As I look into myself, I see, feel, as though I am an old soul who has learned many things and possibilities. How are we to know how far along we have come in regards to obtaining a higher spiritual being during the coming harvest? You are most welcome. Appreciation is always appreciated. I am unsure whether your question refers to now or once the great harvest is accomplished. I've already touched on what happens after in a few replies, so I'll go with the former. As for now, there is a simple method to check upon your progress. Despite what appears to be going on in the world at large, how loving and harmonious are your personal relationships? Remember that the world is your mirror, casting back at the reflections of that which you have projected into it. How many arguments do you find yourself engaging in? Is there bitterness and acrimony within the ranks? Do you look at others and think about how you would like to change them, or do you love them and accept them as they are? Loving and accepting someone for who they are is known as unconditional love. That is something you will spend much time working upon when graduating the fourth density positive. It's a good idea to get a head start. Now, loving and accepting someone as they are does not mean accepting abusive behavior, but it does mean loving and accepting the person's soul, not the soul's behavior. Behavior is not who they are. The soul within is who they are. The quality of your relationships is an excellent mirror from which to gauge the quality of your output, or in other words, that which you are creating. Do you look at a person and concentrate to a greater or lesser extent upon the things that you dislike about them and wish would change, or the qualities that you like and admire in them? Remember that we have said that all thought, word, and deed is creative. You get back exactly what you send out. So when you send out the thought, why is she so hard to live with? Why is he always behaving like this? Ask yourself, what exactly are you doing? Now, focus here, as this is so obvious you could miss it. And in fact, most do. Take away the question from your sentence, and essentially you are saying, she is so hard to live with, he is always behaving like this. Do you see what you are doing? Remember, all thought is creative. You have just created the very behavior in that person that you wish to change, simply because you do not understand the law of radiation and attraction. Now, try an experiment. Take someone in your life that you love, but sometimes have trouble getting along with. Think about the thoughts you have projected about that person, the negative thoughts. Ask yourself, does the behavior that you do not like in that person in any way correspond to the thoughts you have been having about them? If you're honest with yourself, it's a strong bet that it does. Sure, they must have behaved that way in the first place to make you notice that you didn't like it, but we all have off days sometimes. The more you focus on that behavior, the more you're going to see of it. It's just life doing what it does and conforming to your expectations about the way it will be for you. Now, having recognized this, what will you do about it? Simply notice your negative thoughts as they arise. Literally catch yourself as you are having them. And then simply change your perspective. Focus instead about the things you like about this person. How you love their smile, the sound of their happy laughter, the way they do such and such nice thing, how helpful and loving they can be. Keep putting those positive thoughts out. Persevere as you may have a bit of negative work to undo first, but just keep catching yourself and focusing on the positive. Then prepare yourself for an almost magical transformation of your circumstances. Always monitor your thoughts and pay attention to their quality, because what you think about is directly related to what you will see around you and what life will show you. It is the difference between conscious and subconscious creation. 
And what of our loved ones, or more appropriately, my soulmate who I love dearly? Will I be able to take this new journey of the harvest alongside my loved ones? That will depend upon whether or not you both graduate or have to repeat the cycle. Though, rest assured, even if for one lifetime you were to be apart, you will always be together in time-space between incarnations, and you will be able to plan many future lives incarnations together. And one more thing, as I know there are others who are longing for questions answered, why do we dream in metaphors which make no sense? I do not have time left tonight to respond sufficiently, but the short version is that the universal mind speaks in archetypical imagery, in a similar way that the writing in some of our oriental languages uses a system whereby a collection of words or meanings are contained within what is essentially a symbol. So the universal mind uses archetypes to communicate in dream time. Just like understanding any new dialect, you just need to learn the language. Thank you so very much, Hidden Hand. I strongly wish I may meet you someday and have a good talk. You are very welcome, and it will happen as you wish. Not now, in this lifetime, but soon, when we have finished playing this game together. No rush, though, friend. We've all got the time space in the world. All the time space in creation, actually. I must go now for tonight. I should do my best to reply to as many of you as I possibly can do tomorrow, before I must take my leave. Good night to you all. I ask that our infinite creator bless and watch over you. Session 5. This will be our last session together. I will do my very best to pack in as much as we can. I am sorry for those who must have missed my earlier post from yesterday, which clearly stated that I already have more questions than I have time to answer, and that you have spent the time in writing our new ones. My time is so limited, I am unable to respond to you. I have a long journey I must make shortly, and cannot be late for it. I have always been very confused and not clear on the subject of God. Having been tossed around from religion to religion for my parents, it is hard to discern which God to believe or have faith in. Should I keep on having faith in the fact that the word around me is God, and that there is not one particular being that deserves this faith? Religion is either actually created or, at very least, heavily influenced by us. There is no such things as God. God is a human concept which is a misunderstanding of the original concept of creator. This is further confused as there are many macrocosmic level creators, or logos as been explained previously. God implies some separate entity which is outside of you, which you must supplicate to and worship. Our one infinite creator and almost all of our logos and sublogos do not want your worship. They want you to understand creation and your place within it as a co-creator. Ultimately, there is a supreme being in the form of the one infinite creator, but we are all a part of it rather than its subjects. None of the names given for the supreme being by your religions are the true name, but they are indeed correct and in that there is one supreme being, namely the infinite creator. They just have different concepts about it which spring from the text that the religion is based on. Do not worship your infinite creator, but rather live in a state of thanksgiving and service to it for bringing you into being and for this amazing game it has created, in which we may forget who we really are in order to remember and know ourselves one again, as the creator. <laughs> So basically the form that we have is actually just a body with bones and skin and so on and so forth. What matters is our soul or being that is inside us that makes us question and deal with our surroundings in life. So when we die, the pain and suffering is just a part of our human shell and has nothing to do with our soul or being which will carry on into the next life or density. Indeed, pain and suffering are just aspects of the game. They feel extremely real whilst we are playing the game and indeed they have to, in order to make you believe that the game is real. No one really dies, but rather, the matter of human form is shed, much like the chrysalis of a caterpillar when the butterfly emerges. Look upon physical incarnation as the chrysalis in which you may transform. I feel as though I am like Shelby, but have lost my way, or I am just so confused and not in tune with my inner self, that I cannot figure out what is my purpose in this game. Is there anything you can shed upon this? Your purpose in the game is to work upon yourself, to grow, develop, and transform yourself into a more positive and loving being. 
You had certain goals that you planned to achieve before incarnating here, which is a main reason for the veil of forgetfulness being in place, because if you already knew what your goals were, the game would be too easy. Look at the things in your life that you most love to do. Ask yourself what makes you most happy. Experience these things as often as possible, as they will be related to some of the things you chose to put into your soul contract to do here. Also, look at the negative things that often seem to recur during your lifetime. It will be highly likely that these are also things that you choose to come here to work upon. Let us say, for example, that you chose to come here to work upon patience during this incarnation. You will likely find that you have a tendency towards impatience, and that life will often bring many experiences to you in order to test your patience. The idea being that rather than losing your temper, you work upon your impatience and resolve to become a more temperate and patient soul. This same analogy may be applied to all manner of circumstances in which life will test you. Look for and begin to identify any recurring issues you have that you perhaps struggle to deal with and seem to present themselves to you time and time again. Perhaps anger, being abusive, selfishness, hatred, cynicism, and the list goes on. Whenever you find recurring circumstances, it is because you are being presented with opportunity after opportunity to work upon these issues until you get it right, and choose a way of behavior that is more positive. Once you've successfully identified these issues within your life, worked upon them, and used them as the tools of transformation that they are to improve the quality of your character, you will notice that these things seem to almost cease to appear in your life. You will still be presented with them at varying intervals to check that you have not forgotten that which you have learned, but they will be fewer and far between. I hope this may give you some clues as to how to identify the things you came here to do, and how to go about working upon yourself. My life has been a troubled one for a while now, having been so soaked in brainwashed in the human life form and way of life, but lately I feel as though I am starting to wake up and see things more clearly. Am I doomed because of the path I have taken for most of my life? Or can I still save my soul? You are not doomed and your soul does not require salvation. No one's soul does. There is nothing to save it from. It is good to hear that you are awakening and that is another reason why I am here at this time speaking with you. Our infinite creator has many messengers and he uses us all in our own unique ways to help with the awakening, and prepare as many as possible for the coming great harvest. But as I say, you are not doomed, and there is nothing to save yourself from, except perhaps from ignorance. And I do not mean that in an insulting way, but rather, ignorance as in a lack of understanding. At the very worst, you will have to repeat as many third density cycles as is necessary in order for you to learn the things you need to learn in order to progress and graduate to fourth density positive. But one thing is for sure, you will get there in the end. All will find their way home to our infinite creator. Rest also assured that you will not find yourself lost in your cycling. At the end of each physical incarnation, as I previously stated, you return to time-space, or that which has been described as heaven, where you shall once again know yourself as you truly are, a unique and beautiful soul, and a part of our Creator. You only forget who you are during incarnation. The object of the game is to wake up within the dream and in effect become a lucid gamer. To remember who you really are during the game, and to then begin working upon the things you came here for. Rereading this topic with discernment will provide you a plenty of clues on how you may choose to go about this. Thank you for your time here with us, and I wish you the best. It has been a pleasure speaking with you and listening to your knowledge. We wish the same for you, brother, and ask that our infinite creator bless and guide your path. See you when we get home. So, is the harvest an all-or-nothing event, or will it be a mixed harvest? A few moving to 4th density, a few moving towards 4th density and service to self, the great majority repeating 3rd density. And if only 94% go to 4th density negative, then you have to repeat 3rd density and try again for a 95% negative harvest. If so, then I would hate to imagine how much more negative your people would make the earth at that point. I'm still confused about your part in this. In order for you to move on to the 4th level, it must be a 95% negative harvest. In other words, 
To reward your people with fourth density, 95% of the human souls have to be, in the self-contemplation process, as far away from the infinite source as humanly possible. That just doesn't feel right to me. It does not feel right to you as it is not right. You have not entirely grasped the concept. I shall attempt to clarify. The harvest is mixed. Those who are 51% or over on the positive path will graduate to fourth density positive. There you will work upon love and compassion, and it will be a very beautiful world to reside within for you. There will be very little negativity, just a small enough amount that you can still use it to exercise your free will in choosing who you are not, but it will be so much more obvious than it is here that the negativity is a tool to be used. You will see the interconnectedness of all things, and you will know that you are not separate from one another, or from life itself. You will not use words much unless you choose to. Telepathy becomes a normal method of communication, everything is open, and you cannot hide your thoughts from others. From that incarnation onwards, you will not have to experience third density incarnation again, unless you later choose to do so from higher densities, as we have done, in order to perfect the art of service, or unless you somehow, in a fourth density world of abundant love and beauty, inextricably manage to be 95% negative at a time of future harvest, and slide back down the snake, instead of ascending up the ladder, to use another game metaphor. Back to this current great harvest. We do not require a 95% negative harvest, as you have deducted, Instead, what we require is for us to personally attain a 95% negative polarity for ourselves, not for you. We must be 95% negative, at least, in order to graduate to fourth density negative and earn the opportunity to clear our karmic record of all the negativity we have created on this planet before returning to our rightful place as six density guardians of our galaxy and teachers of wisdom to those in lower densities that ask for our assistance. If we do not make it, we will remain trapped in the third density cycle with all those between 94% negative and 50% positive, what I termed lukewarms, and have to continue to provide negative polarity for you. Harsh as it is, our only way out is to be as negative as possible to graduate. We cannot choose to be positive because that is not what we came here to do for you. That's why I often refer to all the horrible things we've done here as our sacrifice. You said that the lukewarm people at the time of harvest would not notice anything has happened, but they'd be on a different planet. Do you mean that they'd wake up with no memory of what has occurred but still be in the same physical body? Or they'd wake up in a new physical body with no memory of any past life? There will be a short experience of zero-point time where you feel utterly at one with your infinite creator. It will be a feeling of blissful, ecstatic expansiveness and unity while your physical vehicle's bodies are dissolved back into light and transported to your new environment. When the transition is complete, the zero-point time will end and you will appear in your new game zone, planet. You will look the same, think the same, feel the same. In fact, it will be just like you all had some mystical experience and life will carry on as normal for you. Same houses, family, situations, job, friends, lovers. Everything will seem the same as before. You will not remember the great harvest or earth changes that occurred as the planet Earth heals and regenerates herself. But you will recall your mystical experience and that will give you hope and a new opportunity to choose a more positive future for yourselves. There will still be the same negative polarity to overcome, but if we are successful in our negative graduation, which we shall be, others are standing by to take our places pulling the strings from behind the scenes. We have more than done our job in discharging our service to you, and we are tired. It is time for us to clear our karmic record, and return to being the being of light which is our true essence. You keep saying help is available to those searching for truth. All we have to do is ask. What is the best way to go about this? I have never had the ability to remember any of my dreams. Read back. I have given guidance on dream recall previously. It takes practice and is a slow process. But you have to start somewhere. Be patient with yourself. 
What specifically can I do to receive guidance on how to reach the state where it is easier to discern truth from untruth? Work upon yourself. Go inside in a state of meditative contemplation. Still your mind that your soul may have room in which to make its still small voice heard. Ask your infinite creator to help you and listen to your inner voice. Be patient. It takes time to develop this inner communication after a lifetime of neglect. When you persevere and keep working on yourself, gradually it will come to you. And when it does, you must learn to trust in your inner guidance, no matter what others may say. That is the ultimate test. To trust what you know deep inside as your truth, even when the whole world tells you that you are wrong. It is hard work to trust yourself when all those around you doubt you and call you crazy, but it is the job you came here to do. The only real and lasting truth is a self-realized one. Messengers can come and go and show you truth until they're blue in the face, but it will not be your truth until you have realized for yourself, deep within the core of your being, that it feels true for you. You should never accept something as true just because someone tells you it is so. But when your inner voice guides you that a truth is true, and you feel that old warm feeling of excitement welling up from somewhere deep within that says, yes, I knew it, hold on to that feeling. Feelings are the language of your soul, and guard it carefully, as you can be sure that your newfound beliefs will be challenged in many ways. It is designed this way, to test you. Your inner truth must be able to withstand the test of time, and will be given a thorough examination. Hold fast to it so long as it is what you know to be true deep within. Allow nothing or no one outside of you to pull you from your path, no matter how fiercely they contend with you. They are just doing their job, even if they may well not even be aware that this is what they are in fact doing. They are performing an important service to you, and you should be grateful to them for that. We wish you well on your journey and ask our infinite creator to protect and guide you upon your path. Arc de Triomphe. I do not have the time to go into your many questions, so I will just select a few I can answer briefly, as I still have so many questions to get through. Do the Orion occultist group specifically target civilizations before they become a social memory complex? Yes, but that does not make them immune to targeting others too if they allow any chinks to appear in their armor. In short, the Orion Empire are fourth density negative. They are lost in the sense that they have drifted so far from their true nature that despite many attempts, we have been an unable to reach them and help them to develop. They exist within their group soul complex, mostly as a group of discarnate entities within the astral planes of the planets they visit. They have no intention of returning home, and instead seek to feed off of negative energy to keep themselves going, as they are disconnected from their inherent natural life force by refusing to abide by the infinite creator's incarnational principles. The time we spend between lives and time space is intended to restore our soul energy from within, in order to continue our upward progression. They are essentially imprisoned within the fourth density negative cycle, as there is no negative harvest beyond the fourth density. So they spend their time traveling the galaxy, basically using the dark side of the force, negativity, to achieve their means. They will eventually be brought back before the one infinite creator, and dissolved back into the intelligent infinity, source of all, though they are being given every chance for as long as possible to learn the error of their ways, and return to seeking the positive, and to begin their journey back home. Their main trouble is they do not want to go home. They see themselves as being gods, and do not intend to submit to the authority of the One. Why all the sudden ramping up of control mechanisms? The Great Harvest is fast approaching, time to really bring on the polar extremes. The Montauk Project. Fact or Fiction? The project is fact, though the publicly available information is in some ways corrupted. Best ways to decipher between truth and fiction, other than what we perceive to be truth, specifically in concerning the New Age agenda and the dogmatic church's ideologies. Follow your heart. Listen to and trust your inner voice. 
please explain the Wanderer's roles and what value it is to be Wanderer if you have no recollection of one's past lives. Also, how does this play with the law of non-intervention? That's if they are here to help people. The Wanderers, or Travelers as they are also known, are those from higher densities who have chosen to incarnate here at this time in order to perfect service to others. They still have to remember who they are, and part of the concern is that sometimes even they do not manage to awaken in the game, such is the power of the illusion. They are here to awaken themselves and then to help awaken others to prepare for the coming great harvest. Though even if they fail to awaken, they are not bound by the third density cycle as they've already mastered it. Once their incarnation is over, they are again free to return to their appropriate levels. Are there any non-corrupted parts of the Bible, and if what Bible version would you suggest? No. As with all sacred texts, they have been distorted from the original information that was given with each translation. Though again, as with all sacred texts, there is still much truth hidden within them, much of it being metaphorical. If you can find pre-King James versions, that is the closest you will get. Good luck with that. Was the Rothschild lineage the organizer of the Illuminati in which Weishop later formed? No. Weishop was just a puppet on a string. The Rothschild's lineage, not its original name, were the preeminent line closing the net of control over humanity. But even they are a lesser line within the family. As I have said, the names you know do not have the real power. They are part of the family, but not an original part. My question is this. What can I do to attract more like-minded individuals to come together to uplift my people's turning to the path of ascension? I've decided that this is what I can do to express my personal act of service to others. And a very wise and compassionate decision it is. We are proud of you. The most important thing is not to force things, and not to be so impassioned in your delivery of your message that you put people off the content of the message itself. There is a balance that needs to be found between your urgency to awaken others and your compassion for the lack of understanding in their condition. Always adhere to the law of free will and never force your message. And getting your message out there whilst being informative, always do your best not to feed the fear and paranoia, as this will act contrary to your intentions of raising the vibration to positive. Deliver your message in a way that emphasizes the hope and the true beauty and reality of our inherent oneness with our infinite creator. Be as a light shining in the darkness. Do not burn others with your light, but rather, allow them to be drawn to your light and be of service to those who come to you willingly. In other words, do not become evangelical with your message, but rather, be the enigmatic and loving wise old sage to whom others are drawn to because of the quality of his vibration rather than the volume of his rhetoric. Most importantly, practice that which you preach. Others must be able to see the effect of our infinite creator conducting his wonderful work through you. We wish you well in your task and are hopeful of a positive harvest for you. But above all things, keep working upon yourself and keep choosing the positive and being of service to others. Because you desire to, not because you feel that you must. We ask our infinite creator to bless you and guide your path. Earth changes. While I understand that death is not the end of my existence, I like my body and would not like to get caught out in any earth changes if I can possibly help it. If your family permits, please could you reveal which places are more likely to be relatively safe during the next three to four years? Would the south of China, Canton, Hong Kong, or Patagonia be good bets? Any other places? I am not permitted to say much here, as there must be those who remain in their locations to help others who are not aware of what is coming. Many of you, whether you're aware of it or not, have chosen this lifetime for that reason. But if you are insistent upon escape, choose the highest places you can find, particularly in the southern hemisphere if you are able. The Peruvian Andes is a good place to be. There is much spiritual power being exercised there, and the Quero Elders are well aware of what is going down. 
Are John Lear, John Lamprocht correct in their assertion the majority of planets of the solar system are inhabited? Most definitely. Not all on a third density level that you can see, though. Is the Earth hollow? Hold on, let me just check. Yes, definitely. If so, how does one gain access? I am not permitted to say. Could you elaborate further on the mechanisms behind the fantastic positive results seen by people who embark on the service to others path? I invite you to really deeply explain the intricacies of the energy play at work. While you get out what you put in is true, I'd like to see the whole concept dissected and fully explored. If you reread some of my recent posts, I believe I have now done so. I recently experienced healing of a minor health problem by sending love to all the sick people in the world. How does this work? Not why, how? Because there is only one of you here. Understand that at a deep core level of your being, and you will understand how it works. As you do unto others, so you do to yourself. You claim your family was put here to be the negative influence of the world. Is there a family it is asserting a positive influence on us as well? Is it up to us, humanity, to be that positive force? An interesting question. There is such a family or group more accurately, but you cannot see them, and neither are you aware of their existence. They help the planet from a secret inner location by the quality of the energy work they engage in and project outward to you from the source. Yes, it is up to you to be the changes you wish to see in yourself and in the world. Your goal is a negative harvest, yet you are clearly are touting the benefits of a positive life. This seems antithetical to your goal. That is not so much a question as an observation, but if you could elaborate on that, I would appreciate it. Hmm, another very perceptive question. Thank you. Our goal is a negative harvest for ourselves, not for you. We provide the catalyst of negativity for you, and it is up to you what you do with it. The drastic extent of the negativity we create, though, has more to do with us than it does with you. So my early reply should make clear why that is so. Also, in response to your observation regarding the antithetical nature of some of what I have shared here, there is a simple explanation. Let's put it this way. I have already been, shall we say, chastised for going well beyond my remit here. It was not intended that I be as open as I have been. In fact, if you follow the topic through again from the beginning, you may notice how my tone towards you collectively has softened somewhat during our discourse together. I have, as far as possible, adhered fully to the laws of free will and confusion, although there have been instances where I have said more than I should have. You, yourselves, will not suffer for this. However, when it comes to my next cycle in fourth density negative and working off my karmic record, I will have to accept the consequences for my actions. But hey, I figure I've got a negative enough life to come as it is, so what's a little extra going to matter? I was reluctant to be the one tasked with this communication. I still very much have a weakness for compassion, but I obey and discharge the assignments given to me. It has been a very long time since I last spent any time in having direct dealings with your kind in general. I do not mean that in an offensive way, just that the vast majority of my time, I only ever see family during my daily and nightly tasks. I do not live what you would call a public life, I am sheltered and secluded. I did not anticipate how involved I would become in this process. To be honest, I really did not expect so many questions and such a warm and open-minded reception for the majority. You could say that I have in some way grown somewhat attached to you. In effect, this window of opportunity has also become such for me too. What began as me just doing my duty has become more a labor of love, and when this is all over by the end of this evening, I think I will actually kind of miss you all, and having this involvement with those of the outside world. I was chosen because it was desired that someone of my diplomacy skills would be best to deliver this message. Due to the very nature of the subject matter, there was much potential for discord. It was felt important that the message did not become lost in a self-righteous or defensive delivery system. So, you got me. And I'm actually glad now in retrospect that you did. 
I sit here and chuckle to myself, in light of the way some people here have spoken to me, how this discourse may have descended into something ugly, or certain others amongst my family who are also considered for this assignment to have actually been given this job. Now I know why I was chosen. As with all things, it was meant to be this way. I couldn't care less what others think of me, so as long as I know I am serving my creator as he desires, to the best of my ability. His is the only approval I require or desire. I have nothing to defend, so I guess that's why I was perfect for this task. Anyway, enough with the sentiment, I have more questions to answer. A common saying among Christians is Satan's greatest trick is convincing the world that he didn't exist. I think there are Christians that would look at what you've written and see it as an elaborate ruse to make the devil look good. Satan is a human invention, simply the personification you have given to all the negativity that has existed on this beautiful planet. You didn't know who to blame, and as you could not find it within yourselves to take any of the responsibility, Satan was created to absolve yourselves. Many of my friends and family are Christians, and they would likely think the same. How would one even go about presenting this information to a person of that mindset? I am not here to spread your gospel, but I would definitely like so to share this with a few of my friends. How can you present anything to ones who have no desire to have their belief system challenged? They will believe what they want to believe, and nothing you or I can say is likely to make any difference. It becomes ingrained at a subconscious level, and when a belief structure becomes an insidious, the only way it is likely to change is through a mystical experience, or such a personal demonstration of another way and the life lived of another, that one cannot fail but to notice that there is something different about them. How can you reach such as these? Only by example. That being said, is it okay if I condense your writings into one long post on my blog? I need to make sure that it doesn't violate my user agreement here. I would also like to make sure that I won't get a visit from the men in black if I do so. That is amusing. Thank you for the chuckle. Yes, you are most welcome to collate this discourse for presentation elsewhere. The only thing I ask is that anyone choosing to do so respects my wishes and copies only the message itself. In other words, do not include all the petty side discussion. If you want to present this message to others, please honor my, our, original intention that the message is presented as a whole. When I said in my opening post that I required provisional faith or suspended judgment, I made it very clear why this was the case. I couldn't care less that people do not believe it. I never expected that many would. But what I desired, in asking for the above, was that the message was allowed to be presented in full, with all genuine questions replied to, and then once that process is complete, you can say whatever you like about how much of a hoax you may or may not believe it to be. If I may be crass for a brief moment, I couldn't give a flying how much vitriol and scorn is poured upon our message, or how many futile verbal attacks may be launched against its messenger. The message will reach all those it is meant to reach, and that is exactly the way it should be. It is what the Creator wants. Those with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand will hear the message and the seeds planted will grow strong in such fertile soil as these. So please, therefore, if you respect that which I have shared here and the courteous manner in which I have shared it, if you want to copy it, copy only my posts. My posts all quote within them the questions I respond to, so there are no other posts required, if a genuine representation of the message is that which you desire to take away with you. Thank you for posting some of the most interesting information I've ever read. I'm a bit of a crackpot and I scour the internet for conspiracies, alternative news, UFO videos, and the like. I can't say I'm ready to completely buy what you're selling, but this has definitely resonated with me. You are welcome, and I, in turn, thank you for reading with an open mind. I would never ask or expect you to buy what I'm selling. If you notice, I have stated throughout our message that the very last thing I want is for it to be blindly believed or taken as gospel. As I've said, it is yet another in a long line of catalysts that your infinite creator has provided you with down the course of history. A catalyst is not meant to be believed, it is meant to present you with a challenge to that which you think you know about reality, and that is all it is meant to do. 
As always, how you respond to the catalyst is entirely up to you, just the way it always should be. Thank you very much for your very incisive and perceptive questions. Whether you realize it or not, you have contributed greatly to this discourse. We wish you well, and ask our infinite creator to bless you and guide your path. Hidden Hand put out some incredibly well-written information, almost like it flowed from his, her, being onto the thread. And that is possibly the most perceptive realization in this discourse thus far. It also allows me to respond further to an earlier question that I indicated I would go into in more depth later when replying to your observation. This message does indeed flow from my being onto the page. I mentioned before that my role in my family is that of the spiritual discipline. A certain poster made all manner of assumptions as to what that role entails and flailed wildly wide of the mark in the process. As I said previously, all of the power lines, off-world bloodlines, that comprise the inner sanctum or hidden hands of the family have certain abilities that third density incarnates do not possess, even the others of our family, the lines you know, one of these being the ability to know their entire incarnational past with focused concentration. There are a wide array of tasks to be attended to that allows our family to function effectively, and we each specialize in certain areas or disciplines in order that the body of our family runs like a well-oiled machine. My area, and that which I spend the vast majority of my time actively involved in, is that of spirituality. Our spirituality. Not that of the peoples of the earth, others below me deal more in that area. I could be likened to that of a priest or a minister, in the same way as your religions and spiritual teachers have the responsibility of listening to the voice of their creator and delivering his messages, so too do I. I have been actively engaged in this role now for a great many years. It has become second nature to me. Actually, more accurately, it has become first nature. A large part of my role is to constantly be in the awareness state of our group soul, Lucifer. That is why you will notice that I so often refer to we even as I'm speaking in the first person. That has just become natural for me. I spend most of my time speaking with my family as Lucifer, the group soul perspective. When I speak henceforth, it is not me, the individual soul spark, that is speaking to you in essence, but rather, for want of a better description, because it is far from accurate, you could say that I, in effect, I am channeling Lucifer. That is why this discourse flows so easily. As some have noted, the chances of me having spent however much vast quantities of time researching all this material to hoax with, and presented in the fluent method that I do, as in regular daily installments, whilst I guess could be remotely possible, is unlikely in the extreme. For those who are open enough to receive the above explanation, now you know why and how it is done. I speak not for myself, but rather for him who sent me, my own creator, Lucifer. I know and have experienced that which he knows and has experienced, because essentially, we are one and the same being. I have never been involved in any organized religions per se, but have always been spiritual. I do look at the many religious texts out there because I believe they all have parts of the story. One can find great knowledge from many different books or religious texts. I believe that we as humans are creators like the one creator and we are all one. I also believe we will be moving into a higher level of consciousness where we can consciously co-create in our world since we are only unconsciously co-creating at the moment. Your insight serves you well. There is so much more I would like to speak with you about, but am not able to think of what exactly I want to say. Thanks for those great words that you speak to us and appreciate what you are doing. With love. Do not worry, friend. We feel your heart. And it does not need to be expressed by the confines of limited words. We can speak all you like and will be happy to do so when the game is over. Also, do you know of Miriam Delicato? I just watched your interview in the Project Camelot site, and it was very inspiring to me. So let me ask, are you one of the tall blondes that she speaks of? She is a beautiful soul. I have not seen the interview of what you speak, but we know of her experiences. The tall blondes of which you speak are of Plagiarin heritage. They are working with what is known as the Galactic Confederation of Planets. They serve the positive vibration. Plagiarins are from the constellation you call the Pleiades. 
Its actual name is the Plagiaris, hence Plagiarans. And no, we are Lucifer and nothing directly to do with the Plagiarans, though they are indeed good friends of ours. I have never seen a UFO or any of the spiritual stuff myself. I just know in my heart that it's there for me to find. What can I do, if anything, to get myself in the correct frequency to see these things and have these experiences? Any and all information you provide would be greatly appreciated. Simply believe and know in your heart of their existence. Think about it. In all of this vast creation, can you really believe that you are alone? I will pre-warn you though, so as to avoid disappointment. You will only receive communication from them if that is something you have already agreed together in your soul contract before coming here. Many here at this time, millions, have a part to play in the Great Awakening and preparations for the Great Harvest. Many who do not believe now will begin to open their minds as the earth changes that are coming begin to take effect. People will be terrified and have no idea what is going on because the governments have concealed this information from you. These travelers, or what some have termed star seeds, are incarnated here to help on the ground level when this all begins play out over the next few years. When the time is right, they will come forward. Most people are not ready to hear this information yet, but not so far off, they will be. Many of these star seeds have not yet awakened themselves. The Confederation stands by ready to help them to do so if it is necessary. For ones as such as these who have yet to awaken, they will have felt all their lives that they are somehow different, and they have a deep sense that somehow they do not belong here. Many of them will also have many dreams and even visions of their lives and their home planets. Many of these star seeds are in fact Plagiarin. That is why the tall blondes keep showing up, to help their family awaken to their assignments here. I am another of the many grateful forum members who appreciate the loving message given by Hidden Hand. I wish I had discovered this thread before today. It's given me much comfort. I was running out of strength, but now feel as though I might just be able to manage now. My gratitude is eternal. From this little spark to that one, thanks for the light, mate. You are very welcome. We are glad to have been of service. You actually feel very familiar to me. If for the reasons I am feeling this to be the case, consider this message to you our part in our soul agreement fulfilled. Take the guidance in this message into your meditations, and also seek information from your dream time. Test these words deeply and take them into your heart, only if they feel right and truthful to you. If they do, then act upon them and allow nothing or no one to debtor you. Arise and play the part that you volunteered to be here for right now. It is almost time. Prepare yourself and be sure that you are ready. We leave you with our strongest encouragement and the love and light of our one infinite creator. He could be what he says he is, I think, but he could be a well-read but bored person wanting to see how far his hoax will be spread on the internet. The thing I do find is that if he is the latter, it doesn't fit the profile. I mean, if you read up on the stuff he obviously is interested in, it is harder to wantingly hoax with it. It goes against the things he loves to read about, and I find it very hard to believe that he is researching this on the fly and putting all this work on something he will never get any more fame than this week of attention. No money or real life recognition or whatever more. I was not going to respond to any more messages other than those who genuinely want to hear what we have to say due to my fast expiring time here, though your point was poignant enough to briefly address, even if only that the accuracy of your statement deserves to have a place in the final collated version of this message. A lot of work and pointless time wasted were it not for the fact this labor of love is all done for the glory of our creator. The lies and rumors about us being an evil and satanic being have gone unanswered for far too long. It was time to set the record straight. Lucifer has sacrificed so much because we love you. As spirituality is your focus, could you comment on the role of the Catholic Church in terms of your role and how the Church fits in either the positive, negative, or miscellaneous paths? The lower parts of our family, the names you know, use the Vatican for many rituals and sacrifices. That should tell you all you need to know. Any specific holy books, or perhaps Bible authors, you'd list as coming very close to the truth? 
the closest biblical authors are those who have been left out of the publicized editions. The closest spiritual writings, other than the raw material, to containing the truth about the nature of the One are the Taoist writings, that of the Tao Te Ching, and the book of Chang Zhu. <laughs> Greetings, Hidden Hand. I consider this a unique opportunity. I have not read this full thread, but I have some detailed questions, so I apologize if something has already been answered. I want to make sure I get my questions out before your time expires. Almost all of your questions have been addressed, and those few which have not, I am sorry that I either am not permitted to speak on, or that due to the tiny amount of time I have left now, I cannot address. My apologies. Hidden Hand, I hope you will answer my following questions. You may be aware of me, as I also cannot reveal all that I know. My question is of a different nature, which I cannot get answers to. My bloodline is of the elite, as to say, Austrian Count, English Earl, Scottish Baron. It seems at some point in the last 100 years, one part of the family lost everything, taken from the government. There's a lot I wish to say, but do not wish to tell for all to see. Are you aware of this happening? What really happened? The English side will not say, generations of my family lived there, then taken by the government. Something happened. All of my family, including myself, have extensive abilities. Myself seem to have the most. I'm also aware of all of you have spoken of here. I would, if you have permission to do so, and I know this would be allowed to do this lineage, like to talk to you on a personal level. Ask who would you have to ask, you will see I am truthful and genuine. Please do not see me as arrogant, but that is the only question I do not know. Obviously you understand that these lines you speak are of only of the earthly lines, and we, off-world power lines, do not often intervene in such inter-family circumstances. All I am permitted to say is that there was a dispute between the Habsburg and Franco-Prussian lines. Things were said and done that should not have been. Consequences arose and action was taken. As for communication on a personal level, I am sorry this is not possible. I hope that within the limits of that which I can say, you have the insight to connect the dots. We wish you well in your task here and will likely see in the near future if you are going to Malta in winter time. No need to reply, as I will have taken my leave by then. We shall deal with these next two posts together. He is reptilian. That's the race of the bloodlines. They control just about everything behind the scenes. And remember, there is no such thing as a bad race to select individuals or groups who stand out more than others. Okay, so I have another question for Hidden Hand. Reptilians are described as being very aggressive, arrogant, and perceive humans to be nothing more than cattle. So what's with the split personalities? You're saying you are loving and spiritual, yet everyone says reptilians are fearsome beings. That amuses us. We are most certainly not reptilian, and there is nothing remotely reptilian about the true power bloodlines. The only reptilian influences that are in any way remotely involved with this planet at this time are those of the Zeta Reticuli and Alpha Draconis systems. They are of no particular threat to you. For those to whom it may be of some interest, we are of Venetian heritage, originally. What is another name that Venus is called by? Connect the dots. Well, that is all the questions I promised to answer out of the way, and my time here is now pretty much expired. I have another few minutes before I must finish preparing for my long journey. There was two later posts that I will just barely have time to offer a passing answer to. I clearly know and are aware about this game, but I have a question to you. Do your 3D families have fractions? Do they know this, all of them? because they have to try to kill me, and it will not work, of course. All I can say on this is that even the earthly lines of our extended family only know as much as we tell them. Certain information they may not use wisely or with proper regard to our Creator and our One Infinite Creator. As has been said before, the top of the pyramid is not the top of the pyramid. Above the highest earthline auspices of the Supreme World Council and another higher aspect that cannot be named, are the hidden hands. Not the real name, of course, but what we have sometimes been referred to. Yes, however, the things, thoughts, ideas he is speaking of are already a piece of copyrighted material and have been published in book format with ISBN numbers and all. The books are called The Law of One. This, these books deal with the very same ideas as the op. Negative and positive polarization, degrees of density, even the exact same term, social memory complex, Harvest is used in the same context, evolution between densities, logos and sublogos are used in the same context, 
the same concept of wanderers, the same concept of infinity becoming aware of itself, the same idea of vibrations in the same context, the concept of us progressing to the fourth density with the next harvest, 2012, and how many of us will have to repeat the third density. There are well over 50 examples of the same ideas and context between the original author, Elnell Research, and Hidden Hand. Elnell Research dates back to the 1981 time frame, thereby leading me to believe that they are the original author. Again, please note that the definition of plagiarism is the unauthorized use or close imitation of the language and thoughts of another author and the representation of them as one's own original work. Therefore, if Hidden Hands is not with Elnell Research, he is clearly plagiarizing their ideas and thoughts. Sources for numbered examples. Even Lucifer had to step in to help me. That was a surprise as you can understand. Does your left hand don't know what the right hand teach? Or is it lack of understanding in certain members in your bloodline? Indeed. I understand occasionally drastic intervention is required. As I said, they do not know everything. Some things are best kept to ourselves. Temptation can prove too great when certain powers lay in the hands of those whose hearts is not utterly pure of intention. Let us just say that some seem to enjoy the game a little too much from time to time. Their actions are more from ignorance and malicious intent towards you. Please forgive them as they knew not what they were doing but thought it the right thing. Okay, I've just finished reading the last few pages of questions. I stated now on a few occasions that I have no time left to answer, but I was asked earlier a question I said I'd finish with, namely that of, if there was a question you had not yet been asked yet, would you consider this it being asked? or words to that effect. So there is one other question from the last pages that I will use in that vein. This will really have to be it though. I am truly sorry I cannot reply to the many other heartfelt responses that sadly must remain unanswered. We must be leaving for an important task in Rome, and already I have others here with me imploring me, will you please just shut down that flipping computer and get your things together? They are laughing at how involved I have become in this task of mine. My father is teasing that I should begin at early 6th density again to balance my compassion. Anyways, I must finish. This has been very informative and has cleared up much for me. Thanks once again, Hidden Hand. My take on this is much different even from what it was the last time I posted in this thread, so hopefully these questions will be a little more relevant. I am curious as to how the bloodline family structure works. You said there are people who are part of your extended family that we may know of. So are these the Rockefeller, Rothschilds, Bush, House of Windsor, etc., typically known in conspiracy circles as the New World Order? How close is your interaction with your extended family, and are they as spiritually enlightened as you seem to be? Can you just kind of give us an outline of how the family is structured, how much each level knows in relation to the top, etc.? Because there are a lot of theories and know-it-alls out there, and it would be nice to get it straight once and for all. Be as detailed as you feel is appropriate. Okay, and this will have to be a really brief overview as my time is up. Starting at the bottom level, you have what we call local cell groups or family clusters. There will be anything from say 5 to 30 or so of these, depending upon the size of the town or city in question. Each local area has its own council, comprised of local leaders representing the six disciplines of learning. There's also either a high priest or high priestess of the order who serves the local community. Above this, you have the regional council, with the leader of each local council representing their specific areas. Then the national council, in the same vein, with the leaders of the regional council sitting to represent their regions. Then you have the supreme world council above them all, with the national leaders representing their countries. Above this is another group I cannot mention, who lays with the hidden hands. Then above this, there are many other levels of leadership, purely from the power lines, the ones that are not of this planet. The Supreme World Council only known as much as is handed down to them from us. In our power lines, we have a similar structure with local and regional groups, etc., though most of us are living in entirely different types of communities than you would understand. All I shall say is that we are not surface dwellers. Also, do people ever try to leave the family? I asked you to comment on the case of one Savali in an earlier post. I am still curious if she was one of you, or your extended family, or is she just a Miss Disinfo agent? I am aware of her, yes. I have not looked at her supposed revelations personally, though heard enough from others in the family. Yes, she was a part of the family at the lower levels from the German lines, I believe. 
As I understand, she did reveal a lot of truth about the lower levels, but she was only regional level in the Earth line, so not that high. She certainly would not have anything like the bigger picture. I understand that she went into detail about some of the training techniques in the lower levels, which to be fair, can be extremely harsh, though as I've said, it's all about reaching the 95% negativity, and when all is said and done, no matter how much one may have suffered in this life experience, we can never lose sight of the fact that this is a game we are all playing here together, and each incarnating soul has already chosen and agreed in advance the parts they will play in the game. No one really suffers except in the game, and ultimately, they have chosen these experiences beforehand at a soul level. No one is forced to incarnate into a storyline they do not want to play and learn from. The German house is renowned for being particularly harsh and severe in its training, so much of what she shares may have happened, though my family have also said that unless her trainers were acting out of protocol, abusing their power, much of what she revealed would not have happened or has been embellished to some degree, for whatever reason. I cannot comment myself, as I've had neither the time or inclination to examine her story. The world of my own family is very different from that of the lower Earth-based bloodlines. Whilst our, my own, training growing up was very strict and disciplined, we were never abused in any way. We grew up with a bigger picture and didn't need any other motivation. The Earth lines are not aware of the entire picture. They, themselves, are not of our Lucifer group soul, and as far as they are aware, they are out to rule the world, to control and enslave and create as much suffering and negativity as is humanly possible. That's what they get out of the deal. World domination. You'd have to say with that in mind, they're doing a great job. But one of the things they don't know or understand is that our Venetian power line's agenda is ultimately for the highest good of all concerned in providing you with the catalyst. If they were aware of this truth, there is a slight risk that they would not have done their jobs properly, and they would miss out on joining us in our 95% negative harvest. They are aware of the harvest and the need for them to attain the 95% to get out of third density, and that is all the motivation they need to help us achieve our ultimate aims. How they go about it is not really of too great of concern to us, as long as they are getting the job done. Sometimes we have to step in where something they may do or plan goes against their desires, but such instances are few and far between. And with that, I absolutely have to finish my time here with you. If I leave it any longer, I am going to be late for my journey, and I will not be very popular if I make my family late. It is a strange feeling I have now in my heart. As I write these last few lines, I could never have imagined I would have connected with you all in this way through this discourse. It was never the original intention, just to put out the information required of me. But somewhere along this journey we have taken together, I have come to feel a certain bond with you. Of course, I know that bond is our inherent unity in our one infinite creator, though to have kind of met and connected personally with so many of you has left me feeling somewhat saddened that our time here has come to an end. But come to an end it must. I thank you sincerely for your gracious hospitality and for allowing us to use your space here for the furthering of our message. And remember, no matter the ideologies that may separate us in the game, the message is all that matters. And the message is that in the love and the light of our infinite creator, we are all one, brothers and sisters of the light. We wish you all the very best in what remains of your journeys here, and sincerely hope for you that you will use the catalyst we have offered you to in some way help you to graduate with a glorious and positive great harvest. We, on the other hand, I'm going to have to go and do some really negative things now to make up for all this positivity. Kind of amusing in an ironic way. I look forward to meeting up with so many of you when the game is over, and enjoying reminiscing about this time and the parts we have all played in this great game. We leave you all in the love and the light of our one infinite creator. Namaste.